about it. We're live. Hello, I'm Eagle. Eagle Gardens. Eagle Garden One on Instagram. And this is fucking talking shit with Eagle. Hopefully the internet gods are gonna fucking stick with us tonight and make this thing happen. Uh, I have two phones tethered to this thing and my internet and everything shut down to try to make this thing happen. I've got internet, new internet coming Sunday to avoid any further interruptions. But uh, everybody had an amazing Friday. It's been up down for me, but hopefully all good from here on out. My pleasure to uh, introduce uh, SoCal Weed Nerd. How you doing tonight? You want to tell us how you're doing and uh, where we can find you? I'm good, man. It's been a long, long week. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's about the only place I'm really at lately. Uh, I'm at uh, SoCal619 on Instagram. Otherwise, you'll find me here every night, brother, watching the show. I'll be lingering in chat. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Oh, I was still, I am actually got goosebumps going down my back right now. It's the fucking, because it's popped off tonight. It has been, I've been arguing with internet providers all day long. I've canceled orders. I've made new orders. Uh, I've kicked everybody off the internet that I kicked everybody off the internet. I'm just so glad, so glad this is. So, yeah, uh, these are these companies. Man. Piling. <laughs> these these uh, internet companies. How's your day? day? Oh, did we lose you? Go ahead. Oh, there you are. Still here. Yeah, you're kind of you're kind of spotty in and out. Okay. Well, this is how it usually goes. Anyway, uh, if I cut if I cut you off. You're the guest. You people, it, you know, it, it might be a little bit of head feedback, but uh, you know, you're, you're the guest and you're the one that everybody's tuning in for. So if I accidentally cut into you, just pretend you didn't hear and just keep oh, on it's rolling. Not- a little laugh on air. Usually, usually you would have got the speech before uh, before uh, we went live, but uh, it's just in that kind of hurry to uh, get it live. So I'm sorry if I, you know, a little bit of feedback gets in the way. Oh, dude, it's all right. We're all here for the same reason, man, to hang out and talk shit with Eagle. <laughs> Appreciate that, bro. And to smoke a big So how you, how you doing today? What are you smoking on when you're done with that rub? <laughs> I'm smoking on some cuvee. <laughs> wow, Kuve is smoking on me. I think <laughs> smoking, on, uh, smoking on some of that Kuve cut that I got from you, man. That shit is just fire. Of all the Kuve I've grown, that cut that I got from you, man, nothing beats it. That is a damn nice cut. I've, I've, uh, I was pretty proud of it. Well, not as proud as sub, but. So what would what would you say the flavor profile is on that uh, strain? How's the how's the taste profile? It's kind of it, it's hard to say. It's got a little bit of that chocolate hint to it, a little bit of fruity sweetness, but it's kind of almost got like some gas in there all at the same time. It's a really weird, odd night. I kind of asked because I know I'm hoping, well, at some point, Umidor will watch because he's been hunting and looking for that chocolate and a little bit in there. And I'm like, my cut's got some chocolate in it. He's like, oh, man, really? It's yeah. kind of got that little bit of chocolate on the back end there. I like that. It, it's a nice cut. It's a nice smoke. It's a nice, smooth, mellow, just easy to smoke. And then it settles in really nice. I really like the way that's up, that cut settles in. Uh, super stoked that you were able to uh, do. 
uh, we've been in contact, you know, through chat and a little bit in phone contact now for a long time. And uh, it's my pleasure to be able to have you on to get to know you a little bit better. Oh, dude, it's, it's an honor to be on the show and, you know, actually uh, hang out with everybody in chat all the time. And, you know, big props to the people in chat, man. Big props to you guys. You guys are learning, taking information, passing information, sharing information. What a community. You couldn't ask for more. Chat is just awesome on the show. The guests you have on, man, I feel like I'm not even, a, uh, don't even have words for, you know, I'm following Danny Danko, man. That's like probably the hardest damn thing I've ever had to follow in my life. So thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate that. It's awesome. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. And uh, thank you, I, you know, for that little bit you said. I did uh, you're, you're scattering in and out. Whoever you were lucky enough to, who's ever uh, was lucky enough to get that uh, dumb beans from you really uh, should be super satisfied. I love that cut. Uh, you know, the loco that you. That, uh, that strain came to me as an idea way back. Um, funny story is when I first started growing indoor, I set up my system, got everything ready to go, and I figured, you know, fuck, I don't want to pop some beans and have this system suck and just ruin good beans. So I went down to a local dispensary that was selling clones, grabbed a couple of different cuts they had, and uh, that that Mendo breath just turned out to be rock solid. It's straight purple, uh, purple trichomes on it even, and uh, it just turned out to be a winner. So I kept that strain around. That was one of the first moms I ever kept. It was actually my first attempt at cloning was that strain. And, uh, you know, I kept it around for a while. And then at the uh, High Times Cup in uh, Riverside, I went up there specifically to get seeds from Sub. So we walked in and I made a beeline, man. I ran. We sprinted. 619 Nerd and myself drove up. And uh, first thing we did was we sprinted up to Sub's booth. And I got Sub's very last pack of locomotion that he had. Very last pack he had. Got it handed directly from Sub at the cup. Anyway, got home, grew it out, and it was just great. We found a great, great female of it and uh, ended up with a good male of it. So I decided that the way I liked the flavor and the high from that local motion I got from Sub worked really well together with that uh, Mendo breath cut that I had. You know, I'd roll a joint, you know, mix the two, mix them up in a bong, whatever. So I decided I was going to take one of those males and just chuck some pollen and see what the fuck stuck. And Mendo Loco came out. So I was really proud of that for my first ever try of chucking some pollen. It's a nice one. So I'm doing an F2 of it now. I lost the male. Um, I still have the female, but I lost that specific locomotion male. So now I'm using my last few seeds of that, and I'm going to do an F2. And once I do, I want to get some of those in your hands so that uh, we can give some of those away to the people in chat. Because... Uh, I don't care about making money on seeds. I don't care about any of that bullshit. If I got them, you need them, you want them, they're yours. That's how I, that's how I roll with that. Money is to be made at work, man, not in the garden, making a hobby and having fun, smoking my weed for free. So once those Mendo Loco F2s are ready, man, they're coming your way and let's blast a hell of a lot of them out to the people in chat. Oh, I will, because I, I, I was very impressed with that strain, much less, uh, you remember when I passed that over to a med grower there? I know I was watching that day. I was sweating as a grower. I was like, oh, God, and, you know, I, I knew I did a good job, but to be critiqued live down the air there was, uh, but he gave me, you know, thumbs up, man. Eights across the board, across if I remember. I'll take that. I'll take that. 
Yeah, he said it stunk up his whole garage when he ground it up. Roll it. <laughs> yeah. I was stoked to hear that, uh, you know, the strain itself, he was really excited with because, you know, he does a lot of great shit. He puts out some good stuff. So to hear that come from him, I mean, that's just, that's an honor right there. And then to know that you grew it out, you're the first one to grow that strain out, Eagle. I uh, I tried and tried and tried. It seems like all of a sudden it was just massive problem after problem after problem in the garden. And I got so frustrated with shit that I just ripped it all out and threw it away and started over. So you and Puffer Smiles were the first two to ever actually flower that strain out. It's kind of funny that both of them ended up in Michigan. I'm glad to see Michigan's passing that shit around. I can tell you that. Damn straight. Yeah, it's uh, so far there's only, including myself, four people on the planet that have grown that out. So I uh, I should have made a lot more originally, but you know what? Live and learn. So now I'm going to do an F2. I'm going to keep that male. I'm going to keep that female. And those will be around for a long time. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I, I got some other plans for the uh, female that I got too. So that's uh, that's in the works right now as well. I'm, I'm hunting a male of a different strain to kind of hopefully give that Mendo Loco a little more weight to it in the end. I liked, I enjoyed the Mendo Loco aspect of that strain. It, it was a nice 50-50 blend. It really was. Yeah, it, it it's weird. I like the fact that uh, for me, like I'll smoke it and I'll be up doing something, you know, I'm working on the bike or on the truck or something, and I'm great. I'm good. I'm having fun. I'm into it. I'm stoned. And then I go sit down and relax, and it just locks your ass to the couch on the back end. So I kind of like that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, let me find my. Uh, I'm gonna have to ro hand roll. Not that I can. <laughs> you know, I, I roll. You ain't right. Right, <laughs> right on. You know, there was a reason why I quit. Uh, I was talking with, I believe it was Miss D's Nugs the other night. She was talking about uh, having to use a roller and was kind of ashamed of the fact. Well, first of all, I didn't, I've never really minded the roller. The, my only complaint from hand rolling to stepping up to the roller was it was, it was a little bit of a bag increase, you know, uh, a bigger bite in the bag because it was bigger <laughs> yeah. joints than I hand rolled. But I didn't mind them, you know what I mean? It, especially now that I grow. That was actually back in the day when I was still buying and seeing the increase, I was like, oh, God, every time that, you know, that heads up. Yeah. Once you start growing, well, it's not so bad. It's, yeah, it's, but, that's, uh, that's the way it is. You know, once you grow, it's like, who cares? Smoke it up. Just make more. I don't know what happened, if it was just me or if they did something in the papers. But the reason I started using, utilizing the, hand, the roller I can't make these fuckers stick anymore if on a hand roll. I don't know what it is, what I do differently. What papers do you But use if it? I hand, huh, the, you know, these three, the, first three. Um, so, the, the, oh, what, what papers? You, Elements. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, so if I like, just lick this, there's a good chance this thing's going to fucking fall apart. You know, even though it's a good seal and all that. Uh, it'll want to fall apart if I roll the same material, same paper in a fucking roller. That thing will stick and hold all the way through. I don't know what the difference is, but it happens all the time. It got to be so bad where I just gave up hand rolling and just started using the roller because I wanted the joint to stay together the whole way through. See, I like the roller because, uh, yeah, I smoke cigarettes, unfortunately. It's like my worst vice ever. But the roller, it comes out about the size of a cigarette. If you do it just right. And you can walk around an event smoking it, and people think you're just smoking a cigarette. They don't really notice twice out here. So it draws no attention. I find, well, up before the COVID, I found as long as you just offered, 
<laughs> Nobody really gave a shit if they got you. Yeah. You want to edit this? Yeah, all right. We're yeah, good. we're kind of, you know, it's funny. We're a legal state. You know, we got, you can walk into the store just like you can walk in and buy a beer. You can walk in and buy weed at the stores here, at the dispensaries. But it's like a 50 50 thing when you're out in public. Some people will walk up here, you'll be sitting down at the beach. People will walk up here, notice you're smoking. Hey, let me get a hit of that. Usually there's some fucking drugged out tweaker bum from, you know, somewhere else. And then uh, there's other people who just go ape shit. Fucking, I'm calling the police on you. You're breaking the law. Who do you think you are? Well, you can't be smoking that shit. But they all fucking voted to legalize it. So it's it's kind of weird here with that, you know. So I just kind of keep it low key. Keep, you know, I don't. This is the first time I really shown my face in public, you know, on this topic. So if you go through my Instagram, like most of my photos on there, you don't see me. So, you know, it's kind of an honor to be on your show because it's the first time I'm going to go show my face. <laughs> I'm honored to have be uh, the first place you've uh, shown your face uh, right? as far as that goes. It's always an honor, them little little things like that, you know, pretty fucking cool. Well, you know, you it's... Guys, uh, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, we keep stepping over each other. I said, uh, no, I, I just, my wife really doesn't, she she doesn't like it, but she understands where I'm coming from. You know, my grow is my baby. I enjoy it. It's my therapy. You know, some people come home from work and they sit down, like my wife, she'll come home from work and read fucking 13 books a week just to unwind. Other people come home and drink. I come home, I go in the garden, I hang out, you know, I hang out with the plants. 45 minutes, you know, an hour after work and I come, you know, settle down and I'm so relaxed and happy. You know, the whole day gets washed away when you're in the grow. All the bullshit, all, you know, rent, bills, grocery store, COVID, politics, all that shit. When you're in the grow room, that's like the best therapy there is. Everything goes away. So she understands that. But because of my wife, you know, I try to keep it so low key to respect her. So, you know, I'll come out and show my face on your show. I know, I know Eagle is not going to do anything stupid. I know the people in chat are not going to no. do anything stupid. You know, we're all here for the same thing. Hang out, yeah. talk some shit with Eagle Gardens, learn something. You're amongst friends here. You're amongst exactly. friends. You know, it's funny because, uh, I'm not real big into like the Facebook and Twitter and all that bullshit. You know, Instagram is where I, you know, talk to people back and forth, check out other people's shit. But it's almost like, you know, certain people go live on Instagram or for instance, you go live on your show and it's like, oh shit, so-and-so's on. Well, let's go hang out, have a joint, kick back, put your feet up, you know, to shoot the shit. And it's almost like you're in a virtual smoke circle. You know, everybody's in their own perspective spot, but we're all just chilling, having a smoke session. And we've never fucking sat down and passed the joint to each other before. So it's kind of cool. Uh, shout out to Gorilla, Gorilla, uh, Grow Gorilla. Uh, man, still fucking them up, even after a couple days off. <laughs> What's up since you gave me a shout out? Man, I miss everybody, man. The last few days, woo! I have been like amped. Yeah, I swear to God, my my whole sleep schedule, SoCal, has been fucked up. Because I don't know if it's because uh, I, you know, haven't been dumping my energy into this, you know what I mean, for the few hours. Because I like to think I put a good amount of energy into this. But uh, the last couple nights not being able to do it, man, I found myself wandering around, not being able to go to sleep, just silly, wide awake. I'm like, God damn, this ain't even right. But it, it definitely feels uh, good to be back. That's for sure. We're going on, uh, what, you're coming up on 70 real quick here, right? It's 70 66. Episodes. Yeah. So, you mean, I mean, 70 days, and you started off with freaking 24 hours, bro. That was nuts. I give you massive freaking props and credit for that. That was gnarly. 
to be able to sit there and go for 24 hours or two minutes under or wherever it fucked you and cut you off. That was the big ups on that. I was looking was at uh, that. You know, even though fucking uh, YouTube didn't post that, I just found out like last week they're not going to post it. Uh, they said I went too long, that I broke the rules, that it can only be a max of 12 hours. It has to be in 12 hour intervals and or 120 uh, 28 uh, gigabytes. And I broke oh, all the rules on that. But at least they still gave me all the numbers. You know what I'm saying? I still get the, still- the, the, the views, the stats, and everything that like that. Oh, but I, unfortunately, we'll never see that footage, which is a bummer. That sucks. They, you know, in a situation like that, that's where these big old tech companies piss me off, dude. In a situation like that, they should just at least somehow find a way to get you your shit back. So at least you can save it somewhere, you know? Maybe edit it and put it back up in, in their parameters. Do, you know, a couple six hours or, you know, a 12-12 something. Do a fire cycle. You know, do a 12-12. You know, however you want to edit it, but at least give it back. Right. Right. Yeah, that's the way I thought about it too. But they probably still got it on on tape. A T Dog that just joined us. What's up, Todd the artist? Well, he's T Dog. Spartan Grown. Oh man, the American one. I'm sorry, brother. I just gotta give some shout outs, man. I missed everybody. I do you mind if I just go run through here real quick and give some shout outs? Because I've honestly missed everybody. <laughs> no, no, go for it. I want to Kazoo, scroll through. Shredder, right. DLP twenty three, the American one, T T one Productions, Sir How, Spartan Grown, Mountain Skies, Bill Sid, T Dog, Jack Screenstock. Who else am I missing here? Trey Valone. Oh God. Model Genetics. There you go. Johnny Canacy, Roger Grove. 25, he's in chat every freaking night. He's a cool cat, too. Jack. Hey, go ahead, brother. Take over. Give some shout-outs, my man. Give some shout-outs. Dude, I want to say something. Was it Bill Sid that won, like, three fucking packs of seeds the other night? Uh, I believe it was. I yeah, dude. The... Lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> Congratulations. So Still got a bunch to give away and more coming, that's for sure. Nutrient shootouts, how you doing? Man. I got two. Just dirty. Sorry, brother. You got two devices going on, scrolling through chat on one and talking shit with the eagle on the other. There you go. <laughs> dirty Indica 9. How you doing? Oh, man. There's a lot of new red, new names. A red Eye Hustler. A Nova, the Rooster, Prometheus Soil. God, it feels good to say these names. Boom Farms, Aldridge 25, the most hater. Uh, the most hated, not the most hated. Most hated, most hated grower. Hated. Ah, it's easy. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know how I managed to fuck them up so hard. Modern Genetics was first one in chat. Thank you, brother. Great to see everybody. I'm stoked. Stoked, man. You talk about two devices there. I Actually, to make this happen right now, I've got a hard line coming from my modem that is uh, from my router that's spotty. It's not even barely pushing up right now. It's crawling. And then I've got my Wi-Fi on the computer hooked to the hotspot on one phone. And then I have the internet tethered from the other phone into this computer, all kind of pushing in <laughs> a three-way kind of wham-bam on this computer to try to get some internet tonight. He's just got a little menage <laughs> going on with the freaking internet. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, keep... too, brother. Show must go on, right? That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> got to do what you got to do, man. I don't even want to tell you where my hands are right now on this computer to keep it going. Um, <laughs> yeah. No comment. <laughs> uh, 
Just We're not going to go shoot across the screen here in a minute, are we? No, 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 no. Not for me. If it's, it'd be all computer juice. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny. That's kind of twisted. I like it. Oh, day grow. Uh, what's up? So you know, it's funny. Like in chat, when I'm on chat, I try to keep shit mellow because uh, I got the most fucked up warped sense of humor in the world. Like either you think I'm a total complete asshole, or you get my humor. And it's fucking hilarious. So I try to keep that off of the chat, but I ain't pulling no punches tonight, dude. Let's hang out, talk some shit with the Eagle, smoke some bowls. CJ Apple, he's like one of the first ones that ever tuned in. Jennifer Steele, oh my God, they're just like piling in. This is fucking awesome, brother. I feel, I hope that you're getting some. I, I'm kind of cheating you a little bit on this episode because it's like days back, you know what I mean? It's two nights of be not being here, and it just feels like uh, uh, I'm addicted. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Is it possible with. to be addicted to my own show? <laughs> yeah, it, well, dude, it's it? a full-time job, you know what I mean? So you're putting uh, your heart and soul into it, dude. It. You're this isn't even a job. This is a labor of love right here. This is a, uh, you guys spoiled me, man, coming in fucking night after night, getting to meet great people like yourself, you know. Where else, where else could I ha honestly have this pleasure and uh, opportunity? So this is, a, you know, my pleasure's been out here. All 66 of the episodes of this has been, uh, you know, here. I love this shit. I feel very, very lucky to be here listening to you guys night after night. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for showing up. Hey, but you know what, though? Out there, the people in chat that are here night after night after night, fucking the American one. What's up, brother? Uh, you know, all these people, right? Chris Mertz Smiling. is here every night. Dude, we love Can't... this shit, man. We love watching you. We love all fucking hanging out, talking shit in chat. It's it's nice, and you provide us that opportunity to do that, dude. We love it just as much as you do. I All of us. See my man, Smiley Cat. He's to hang out with that cat, dude. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to you, brother. Let's go back to you. Let's start from the beginning. When was your first time uh, smoking down? Tell me about it, brother. <laughs> You know, it's funny. My first time ever smoking herb, I remember like it was yesterday. So my older brother got kicked out of the house because he was a fucking asshole to mom and dad. But he was funny as hell. He's cool. They just couldn't deal with him. He was a fucking ass. He was the kind of guy that would like come home driving drunk at you know, 16, 17, up the sidewalk, across the neighbor's lawn and park like, you know, in front of the fucking bedroom window on the lawn. So, you know, he was just an asshole like that. So they went and rented him an apartment. And me and my brother went over there one night, and he wasn't home, and we found his bag of herbs. So we smoked it. In summer, going into eighth grade. And it was the funnest, stupidest, dumbest night we ever had hanging out at the older brother's house. And after that, I was just like, hey, we're coming over. We're going to smoke all your weed again. And man, he got so pissed off. <laughs> so pissed off. But that was my first time in seventh, seventh grade, summer going into eighth. Sounds like uh, it didn't deter you none. So did it kind of just like take off like most people? It was like a weekend deal. Everybody's saving up their lunch money to score that weekend sack. Something like that? No, well, we figured out he was selling herbs. So <laughs> we blackmailed the shit out of him. It there was like, go. we have on the older brother. Let's go blackmail his ass. So we never really paid for shit. We just stole it from him. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, but I didn't really smoke full time until shit and cool, until I started, uh, getting towards the end of the desert racing thing is where I really started smoking a lot. But up until then, that was like 
early 2000s is when I really started smoking on it daily. But before that, it was just like whenever, wherever. You know, if we had weed, we had weed. If we didn't, we didn't. And out here, I don't know if a lot of people think about California as full of weed and overflowing and shit washes up on the waves on the shore. It's not like that. It is now. I mean, now it's everywhere and it's shit. But back in the day, man, you could go three, four, or five weeks and you couldn't even find shit here. I can't believe so. what I'm reading here. I, I just got to pause it for a second. 42420 just told me that I got a great shout out from uh, Doggo on the fucking grow tube tonight. I can't believe this shit. What a fucking awesome night. Nice. So uh, it was scarce. You could only get it every couple of weeks there, huh? Yeah, like back in the uh, back in like late 80s, early 90s, all the way up to the mid 90s here. It was hard to find good weed. You know, we'd get an ounce from some dude. We'd meet him in front of like the middle school down the road. And it was some shady ass dude that you're pretty sure he was, you know, selling for the cartel. And it smelled like ammonia smuggled across the border in somebody's butt. But that's what we were able to find at the time. And if you got anything good, it was always just called indica. Oh, I got some indica. All that meant was you got something that wasn't full of ammonia and, you know, smoked good. But now out here, it's just fucking ridiculous. There's shit I never even heard of on the market. So uh, how long from seventh grade to uh, this point? Can I talk, put a little uh, time on there for me. All right. So like throughout high school, we didn't really smoke a lot of weed because we were always stealing the older brother's car and fucking cruising and whatever. So smoking weed wasn't really a priority because we didn't want to get busted. You know, we're underage and our older brother's car that we stole because he was drunk and gave us the keys and didn't realize it driving to the beach. You know, we were just cruising. We didn't really think about weed until like after high school, it started really getting where I started using it for different shit, not just to smoke weed. You know, I, I was racing off-road in the desert on a motorcycle and your body gets beat up and you, you get back after a race and you smoke and you're like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm relaxed. I don't hurt. My knees are okay. My back doesn't hurt. You know, I can walk. So after that, I was like, it just kind of blew up when I found it in that aspect. So, and then uh, I started growing, you know, late senior year of high school i tried to grow a plant at my parents house it's the dumbest thing i ever did if you're out there and you live with your mom and dad don't grow a fucking plant in their goddamn tomato garden they're gonna find it guaranteed just don't do it well you know what's funny i just thought about this as you were saying that because i've heard this story you know a couple of times where you know people were trying to grow in you know their flaws when they were young and everything i could see that not being able to be too possible back in the day you know all they smoking and depending on what they were smoking wouldn't match the smell coming out of your closet or wherever but if you think about it these days these days <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I think it'd be quite easy for a kid to sneak a plant in their closet and uh, <laughs> maybe get away with it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But uh, back then, I, back definitely then, not. Yeah. You, somebody smelled it growing, you were done. But now, yeah. So but what, do you remember what kind of what that first strain was? Uh, I have no clue what it was. It was like some Mexican brickweed smuggled in a donkey's butt from freaking Tijuana. It was trash, dude. If I saw it, if I saw that today, I wouldn't even smoke it. I'd just laugh at the people that had it and tell them I'm sorry. Give them something better. Yeah, it's it's funny. We throw around the term uh, 
weeds now a little bit these days. You know, some people, you know, a lot of us, I have been though. I mean, once you yeah. start growing your own, your, your, your scale goes up quite a bit. That's for sure. But, you know, think how far we've came from, you know, high school days. I know how far I've came, you know, breaking open the bricks and shitty, shitty butt assisting seeds when you were out to you know practically smoking seed husks and you know shake the what you found it have you ever smoked the shit in the drawer where you kept the tray that you know the from that actually fucking dumped off from being bumped around in the drawer and you're out like yep <laughs> we've all been there nowadays man we would be like, oh, my God, you do what? <laughs> that is so gross, man. You know, it, it's, it's weird the, the amount of, like, yeah. shake. And, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's funny. It's funny how things have changed in years. Times have for changed. The, for the better, though. For the better, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. In more ways than one. You know, and more than just that aspect. You know, I remember walking through... Like, where I grew up, there was a schoolyard that we would cut through. Because, you know, cut through the school, you didn't have to go all the way around the bitch. And it was quicker to get where you're going. So back in our, you know, the bicycle days, getting around town, we'd cut through the school. Well, coming back, we were always, you know, just walking, having that last little smoke before you got home to the house. And we were talking one night, and we're like, you know, one of these days you're going to walk into a 7-Eleven and buy a pack of Marlboro Greens. And it's going to be some freaking dank weed pre-rolled in a cigarette pack. Like it was nothing. You know, so, and then today, oh, they'll be the you walk into the store and buy freaking 20 pre-rolls. So, in a sense, you know, it's come that far. They're not dank, though. <laughs> They're not dank anymore. I mean, it'd be nice if be fire all the way through but man I, I was running downstate not so long ago but, uh had stopped for some meds at like a provisioning center and grabbed a couple of pre-rolls and it was first of all it was the one was a ten dollar uh pre-roll that was supposed to be the mac a joint of the mac and if that was somebody's mac i would be ashamed I, oh, I've seen you told oh, I got that from somewhere. Oh man, how embarrassing that to have your name connected to that. And then I ordered uh it was they called a fire stick, which was another pre-roll rolled in oil and the keef and all that bullshit. Yeah. Or I think it was like 15 or something like that. And it was more of the same, just <laughs> rolled in oil and keef, and it was horrible even through the oil and keef. I was like, man, uh I can't believe they would do this to people. I mean, is it that yeah. bad? To it's sad, man. It's all about the money now. You know, if they can sell it, they're going to sell it. They don't care Jeez. what they're selling. We have a, a paper. take that shake and make some trim or make some edibles or something out of it. You ain't got to set up, try to make try to sell it as a pre roll. Take off that trim and throw it in the freaking ice water bucket. Yeah. Sell it. Yeah, so, I walked, uh, I walked into sorry, a, brother. I walked into a dispensary out here because uh, we have a little like a weekly, like little city reader thing that comes out every week. It's just like stupid, you know. Every city's probably got their version of it, just a little like local publication type deal, right? And uh, the last like twelve pages of this thing was all dispensaries advertising in the freaking local paper you know come in buy five of these get two of these free and buy an ounce get an ounce free type shit all over the place so i walked into one because they advertised they had locomotion and at the time I, my locomotion was in flower for the first time so i was like hey shit they got it i'm growing it, and i want to see it you know i want to see the finished product that, I'm gonna, that i should end up with and i go in there and I look at their locomotion, and it looks like 
I don't know, some Labrador, you know, fucking my dog ate it, shit it out. And they just put it in a bag and called it locomotion. That was, so after that, it was like the pre-rolls, the shit they sell in the stores. It's, I don't even trust it anymore. You know, no, we were, no, and I have no no faith in that package system either. No, it's a bunch of dumb fucks sitting back there getting stoned out of their minds that don't really know anything about, you know, the plant or the benefits or the medical side of it. All they know is that, you know, you smoke this fucking weed and you get stoned. And now they think they're cool, so they're going to work in these dispensaries, stoned, just doing their own thing all day. Not giving a shit what they're putting on the shelves. Because no matter what they put out, people are going to come buy it. You know, you see, you go and you see these big ass freaking mason jars they keep them in. They're not, you know, the dispensaries out here suck. You can open the jar, reach in with your hands, grab the buds, pick them up, smell them, play with them, put them back, grab another one, and they don't give a shit here. To no, me, that that's right. just that ain't right. You know, that ain't right. <laughs> No, you're losing turps every time you open that uh, open that jar and force the new uh, you know, new air. You're losing some of your turps every time, every time. And every time. People touch it like that. Right. But look what else you're putting in it, you know? You don't know if that dude that was walking in there picking that up was just outside freaking scratching his butthole and then grabbing, his, grabbing your freaking weed with his finger. You know, you don't know that. And I don't want to trust that. I don't want to trust that's not happening. Or some dude walks in there picking his nose in the lobby and then goes freaking puts his fingers in there. I don't want that. And that might be a little conspiracy theorist, but there's that chance, you know. Look, look at these stupid idiots that were going to like Walmart and licking the ice cream. Same kind of thing. So I'll stick to my little garden growing my own and knowing what I have. And enjoying every minute of it. So, uh, woo, that one got me. Uh, after the closet grow at your parents' house, uh, when was the next next attempt? So, where we lived, we had like this hillside. We're in, you know, we're in suburbia, freaking California. But we had this little open hillside area in our neighborhood that we used to play on and shit as little kids. So we'd found some little springs and streams and shit like that up there and nothing huge. Nothing like you'd think you'd see in Northern California where there's like a creek running through your yard. This is like the rocks were getting wet in this one area and it was like you could tell there was underground water. So we went through some seeds up there. And that was shit probably... Uh, sophomore junior year of high school we put them in five gallon buckets cut the bottom of the bucket out dug a hole and stuck the whole thing in there and uh just let it go and we actually ended up with some decent for the time you know decent smoke all through the holidays that's always nice that's always nice especially and then, you know then. <laughs> Right. And so we trimmed all that up and that was, uh, that was our first ever grow. And, you know, when I say R, I'm, you know, I'm every time referring to my, my brothers, but, uh, you know, that was our first ever grow. And we'd known that like hash was around and you kind of mix it with some ice for a long time and some water and you get this hash. That's what we thought. So we took all our trim and tried to make hash and we ran that shit for like 40 minutes with a drill. And we ended up with this big green lump of shit that we thought was hash. And it was the worst thing I ever tried to smoke in my entire life. It was nasty. It was all just leaf mutilated into a pulp that we tried to dry and smoke. First time I made a hash, uh, the guy at the grocery store there was trying to tell me that uh, the best way is to just put it all in the cooler, mix it up, and then let all that ice melt and all this stuff. And uh, uh, it turned out terrible. Uh, so just, I never went back to that grocery store. I was so pissed. <laughs> That's about what we did. So we used a fucking drill on a drywall paddle to mix it. 
and it just tore that apart. It just destroyed everything that it could have been. But hey, you know, it's the first time. Total epic failure. I'm glad I went through it. Taught, taught us a lot. Right, right. You got to learn So You got to start somewhere. Well, yeah, right. and you got to screw up to get to where you want to be, you know? If you do everything perfect the first time, you screwed up somewhere because you didn't do something. And somehow, some way, you missed something somewhere. It takes a long time to really figure out your style, your key, what works for you, what schedules work for you. You know, there's a lot more to it than just putting a seed in some soil and giving it water and light. Put a lot of love into it, that's for sure. <laughs> it puts a lot of love back into you, too, you know? It's therapy in, in more ways than one. It does, it does. And it, it's like I was speaking with uh, Danny uh, yesterday. And, you know, it's amazing how it filters everything from the earth to uh, our shitty days. It just uptakes and uptakes and uptakes. And what the miracle I think about it is, is uh, as it's taken in our bad energy and a lot of, you know, in some cases, negative bad shit out of the soil, uh, it turns it into good shit. And somehow or another through that process, you can turn around, burn that flower and just turn your day, you know, it's complete opposite of what it took in. It's a fucking miracle. <laughs> it, just your whole mental and physical perspective just changes after you smoke you know you just completely relax M mentally physically it's just it helps it's a great plant man as a matter of fact we should all smoke some more i agree i agree with that oh man it's such a, it's just such a great night to be back and hanging out with you. That's for sure. Yeah, you know I have, that? I'm kind of stoked that you know, bittersweet. Your first show back, I was the one to be here. That's kind of uh, cool. I know, and everybody, I got DMs all day long. Oh, heartbreaking, <laughs> heartbreaking. <laughs> it's all right, man. You got to get on and blah blah blah. It's, uh, after, it's so hard uh, for me. One, I'm not after, a fucking quitter. And for you, I just, I when I put, I'm, I'm like one of the people that's like a firecracker soul, I guess. You know, I just put everything I into it until, bang, it's gone. And, you know, just right? to sit there and not be, ugh, it's tough. I'm glad to, uh, you know, and everybody, when I put up that poll, so everybody was like, so maybe two weeks? I'm like, oh, God, I hope not. But new internet Sunday, and uh, hopefully nice. walk through this tonight and tomorrow. Uh, God, I'm, I'm glad. You know, even you sent me a text earlier in the day. Is it going to happen? We can reschedule. And I'm thinking, no. No, don't you even put those thoughts in your head, man. Positive vibes, positive vibes, man. I even, uh, I, I'm telling you, man, I did everything I could. Shut the computer down before, like an hour before. I'm like, I'm just going to give it a break, man. Just give it a break. Let it take a little nap. Let it rest. <laughs> it's, it sounds silly, but this shit all happened, man. I just... Said a little prayer, man. I think if you go back and watch, I you can probably even see me at points where I'm like, when I'm blinking out, I'm just like, please come back, please come back, please come back. <laughs> she was an amazing sport about that, too. Oh my god, oh, great people, man. Great, nothing but great people through here, including yourself, man. Yeah, I just, I, I well, our little conversation this morning, real quick, you know, I, I text you last night i think it was to make sure and then uh let you know all the info and shit and then uh this morning i'd see you text back with it you know and then I, I checked your ig and i was like oh fuck <laughs> you know damn he's gonna be having a bad stressful day so that oh, sucks man. you have to do that all day man i fucked around with that shit 
for hours yesterday. You know, somehow or another, Bless got through with Danny Danko. And I thought, yeah, cool. I, you know, so I kind of was all right. And then closer it got to the time it started fucking up. And then uh, it fucked up right around 1130 there. I call, I actually called customer support. Oh, my God. Customer support says, uh, I spent an hour and a half. I got was on the phone with them till 130. Doing tests, all line tests. They, oh, I couldn't trust this. Oh, that. Oh, you should be all set. All right, cool. Stay on the phone, motherfucker. And uh, <laughs> don't oh, you I dare back. let me go. I come over to the computer, click on the Zoom and shit, and go beep, boom, boom. I'm like, there it goes. There it goes. Now what? And then they, I don't know. Everything says it's good up until, uh, well, we'll write you a ticket and they'll come out on the 11. Oh. But, oh, yeah. you know, you can keep calling <laughs> us back. What fucking good is that going to do? You want to be, yeah. Oh, I was so pissed. Oh, dude, I hate dealing with those people. It's like all the utilities, in, you know, in that category, internet, phone, cable, freaking all those bills well, and shit you pay every month. I hate dealing with those companies. They don't know what they're talking about. You know, this you call your phone this, company, your cable company, you know, because you, you got a problem. They're just reading from the fucking computer. They don't know. They're guessing, too. That's what it is, too. They're just trouble. A lot of them are troubleshooting through a book or manual uh, online or in their you know hands. <clears throat> but, uh, he, you know, he gave it a valiant effort from whatever he was doing. But this is this. This is what pisses me off. All right. This is my where I'm like short circuiting. Is uh they've got me and what the, the frontiers got me at three megs. Okay. To make this story even worse, as I'm shopping around today for internet, I find out they're only advertising one. Somehow, some miracle, I get three. <laughs> and so what they're telling me is I'm talking to them is like how many devices are hooked to your internet? I'm like, what the fuck does that matter? You know enough. what I mean? It's an internet world. Everything they build these days is hooking to your fucking Wi-Fi. So you're going to blame it on me and the fucking many things I have fucking that hook to the Wi-Fi? That ain't right. Uh, let's let's talk about your shitty internet that, uh, you know, because I look into it. They're telling me the three megs was just strong enough to maybe support three phones hooked up to the Wi-Fi. I'm like, where in the... How do you even feel good about telling me this? And then you're trying to give me a guilt trip about having... Just because I live in the woods, I'm not supposed to have technology? Is that what I'm being told? <laughs> right? But I don't uh, know how to do. Should my power be flittery and jittery and, you know, just go out like that too? Because we're not close enough to the freaking concrete jungle? Just to, just to answer, uh, 420, 420. Nobody comes out to the woods here. They come up like fucking five miles from my house. Spectrum is the closest thing. With Spectrum would be awesome. It'd be fire. But no, uh, fo the phone line from Frontier was the only other option. And the only other option now is satellite. There was two other satellite, uh, Hodges and uh, Viastat, the one I ended up going with. And uh, that's it. That's that's all the fucking internet choices I got. And, that, and that's the other thing too. They're trying to tell me that on that three megs, they're like, "Well, what else are you doing with this?" I'm like, "Well, since you guys don't offer any cable or anything, um, I'm streaming every bit of entertainment through Netflix, <laughs> YouTube, and Zoom meetings." So, yeah, that's, you know, everything I do is through this damn internet that uh, has been a miracle you've held out this long, but it's got to go. Damn. Ah, damn it, it's okay. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. You, oh, oh. Bittersweet, you get to be the first one back, but I keep getting it side rant because it's the first oh, dude, one it's back. Great. And, it's great. Uh, be excited, dude. It's freaking, when you put that much effort into something and you see it, like, just fall apart all of a sudden it hurts it and does it hurt, man. play with it again you know it was like the best Dude. thing ever so 
I love doing it. It's it's a passion project. It really is. But when it goes wrong, it really hurts. Yeah. Let's get back to you, bro. Let's get back to you. So let's go back to the you know the next. Uh, you were growing outside the last time. Uh, yeah. What was your next effort like? Uh, so let's see. We grew that shit out, and then uh, we kind of started. We kind of started doing. Yeah. Us, you also, if you got any, uh, you know, cook fun cannabis stories of any type, you could throw those in. It doesn't matter. Grow cannabis. I don't care. It's your call. It's your night, brother. <laughs> All right. Take it wherever you want to go. <laughs> so I got a good cannabis story for you. A couple of them, actually. Um, so a couple of years back, you know, we'd always seen like High Times Magazine and, you know, everybody's heard of all that shit. Everybody knows about the cups. Well, there'd never been one really close to us that we, you know, drive up, go to the cup, come home. You know, it was always a road trip to go to a cup. So we found out about the SoCal High Times Cup a few years back and we rolled up to that. 619 Nerd and I uh, decided that I would drive up there in my truck and he would drive home since, you know, he doesn't really smoke. So we drove up, got to the cup. Went in, that was when I went and got those uh, local motion seats from sub went in and uh, on the way in, we didn't realize that you had to have a medical card at that point in time. And he didn't have his. So we had to wait in the long ass line for him to get the medical card right there at the freaking door of the cup. So I walked into the little pavilion thing right out there and was like, oh, I'm going to buy a pre-roll. We're at the freaking cup. I'm going to buy a joint and walk around and smoke a joint. Had no idea what I was in for once we got in the main gates, you know? So we go in and uh, it was culture shock right out of the gate, right out of the fucking gate. We thought we knew what we were walking into, walking into a cannabis cup. And we didn't realize it was like a giant swap meet of weed and people just smoking and partying and having a great ass time. It was different. It was something I've never experienced. So anyway, we go through the cup. Later that night, we're leaving. Jump in the truck to drive home. Go two hours the wrong way. Didn't even fucking realize where we're going. We're going east. We should have been going south. (laughs) Didn't even know it. All because of the cup. <laughs> I can believe that. I can believe that. What were they handing out? Like a lot of freebie edibles at that one? Oh, edibles, vapes, dabs, freaking, you name it. If they had it, there was a free sample. You know, so anybody in chat, you guys, uh, I haven't really been keeping up with chat right now because I'm kind of stoned and it's hard to multitask reading and talking and talking shit with Eagle. But uh, if you've never been to a cup type event and you have the opportunity to go, you're an idiot if you don't. Just for the sheer uh, experience of it. I, I, Eagle will agree. He's been there. He's seen them. It's the best time you're going to have and probably not remember most of. Luckily, it's never been so familiar it's always been right in my backyard practically so i knew where i was fucking going when i left but i have been lost inside of a cup oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's a is to keep you in man if you find the exit i feel like they should give you a piece of cheese at the door let you go oh in this in this instance uh we were uh it was an edible lot they had like an edible village in the center okay and right. they were just fucking throwing them at you. Just crazy. And they were good, man. I was fucking monster. I was just eating everything they were throwing my direction. Well, <laughs> we made it, you know, one pass through Edible Village there. Done. And then go out and wander through the cup there. Check shit out. We really was that. The other thing, uh, we go back in there to buy you know some of the samples that you know we had there and we're so fucked up that 
we couldn't find the fucking vendors that you know the ones that we liked to get shit yeah. and so that day we end up not getting what we wanted because we were so fucked up we couldn't find the, the vendors that we liked you know what i mean we we're just that tore up from the edibles oh, the yeah. next day i go back and it's like laser focus and shit because i'm not that high anymore it was like they were right here the whole time man i just how did i miss this and shit it's like uh oh. but it was a great day man. The was in front of for an hour and a half <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, dude watch out for the uh, root beer floats at those cups <laughs> The root beer float and the Kush tacos, man, those will ruin your day. You ain't going to remember that cup. You're going to have the time of your life, and you ain't going to remember it. You're going to hope the photos you see tomorrow are uh, pretty mellow. But I remember here, man, at that, the last couple of events we went to, it was, you know, big cookie sheets full of just dabs. And it was, hey, free dab, free dab, free dab. Every booth you walk past. Every nutrient company there was giving you free samples. Like, dude, you, you take a backpack with you so you can go unload it in the car three times and fill it up a fourth before you go home, you know? But after like an hour at the cup the first time, I was so fucking high from all the free shit that uh, I was like afraid and intimidated to walk up to the booths and get the free samples. <laughs> So here's advanced nutrients coming out fucking every product they have in sample size all in a package. And I was like, no, dude, I'm too stoned. I don't want to go up there and get that right now. Yeah, I know the feeling there. I know the feeling. Yeah. It, it can get heavy. It can be a workout, too, if you don't, if you're not making that trip back and forth to the car occasionally. You know, it can be a workout. Lugging around all the nutrients and whatnot. All that yeah yeah and then you got booths just throwing shit randomly grabbing handfuls of freaking pre-rolls and little containers of nugs and candies and you know everything they got just throwing handfuls out of the crowd and you're walking through and you get hit in the freaking head with a jolly rancher but it's you know 100 milligram freaking jolly rancher <laughs> so you pick it up and eat it and like 10 times later <laughs> you're walking around freaking oh shit look there's a jolly rancher what do we do with those? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I, I, I all all the shit I get from them cups, man, from friends and free samples and shit. It's all good. Right. <laughs> yeah, those can get fun. So, uh, what? What all events have you been out uh, to out there in California? You guys have some great ones out there. We do, but they're all far from here. You know, it's yeah. all like, uh, you know, northern L.A. and above. So to get to one here, it's you're still driving, you know, two, three, four hours to some of them. So the, the ones we've been to lately were the, uh, well, we went to the High Times Cup, which is, if you don't go to one and it's in your area, that's on you, but make the drive. It's worth it. But that and uh, they have the Harvest Cup out here. And that one was kind of, it kind of sucked because they don't give the actual true outdoor growers of California time to harvest and cure and, you know, get everything cup ready. So it wasn't as great as it should have been, but they're still fun. But the High Times Cup, by the, by all means, is the best one out there. That's a fun event. Yeah. I, I, everybody bitches about, uh, not everybody, but some people can bitch about the cost. You know, I don't care. I don't spend that much on a good fair or whatever. And, taking weed to smoke on the way there or in <laughs> you know what i mean it, to be able to have that kind of fun and be able to smoke the whole time and be able to hang out with the awesome people that's just it half the time so cal i don't even fucking go to the you know, it wasn't to uh the as the last few cups 
of hanging out with the Michigan Bros Bro Show there that I really dedicated some time and uh, to fucking going to booth to booth to booth and talking to everybody, which was uh, mainly because I was hanging out with them. Most of the time, I'm fucking... I can give a shit about what's going on in the booth. I'm like sitting on the hill with you know the cool people shit smoking weed and shit. It's more that's why I'm there. I ain't there necessarily to buy a whole lot of stuff. You know, I'm there to uh, be in a large group and smoke. I'm like a kid, man. As soon as I open up that fucking door, man, my car door, you can smell the dads and the fucking hundred different kinds of weed. Oh, man, if he hardly even touch the ground all the way to the fucking door and shit, I'm 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 at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we were at the the high time scop. It was like we couldn't see the place from where we parked. We're like, well, which way is it? Where do we go? You know, it's the parking sucks. You're parking in some dirt lot down the street that some shady ass tweakers fucking taking your twenty bucks to watch your car in the slot. And you don't know exactly which direction to go because you're way out of town or whatever. You just follow your nose. Follow yeah, your that's up. <laughs> so so true, man. Uh, like for it's the biggest thing that I can think of in that aspect here in Michigan is uh, the hash bash, the last hash bash that uh, um, I went to was obviously not this year. It was last year. Man, as soon as you were getting rolling into Ann Arbor there, you could fucking smell it. I mean, I would say five miles back from Ann Arbor, if you had windows down, you could already smell it. And just like you said, as you were driving through town, if you wanted to know where you were going, all you had to do was follow your nose as it got stronger and stronger and stronger. You knew you were getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, love this plan. Yeah. <laughs> follow your nose and then follow the fucking people that can't drive or the people that you see smoking a joint driving down the road. You'll find it real quick. But yeah, those cops, man, they stink from oh. a long way away. <laughs> and it's great. I, I love the people, the lines, the people that are like in the lines and they've already gave in it. You know what I mean? They're like, we're here. We're on the property. This has got to be okay, right? They just like start burning down in line and just passing it. How, where'd you guys come from? You know, you actually start that banner with people you don't even know and shit. Where'd you guys come from? How long, you know, how long of a drive was it for you? Just like you said, and, uh, by the time you get through the door, you've just made some new friends and shit. It's right. always a great time. It's yeah. Sometimes it is a little steep, but I've never went. Ah, I've never came home from one and went. Yeah, they ripped me off. That was no fun. You know what I mean? It's never right. Been like right. That. No, but you know the cool thing is too. Like a lot of people know a lot of people on Instagram and you know YouTube and all the platforms. You know Twitter, all that shit. Right. You talk to people. You comment on their posts. You look at their posts. You know you chat with them here in the chat. But the cups, you know. The locals run into each other and you realize, oh shit, you're SoCal. Oh, you're Eagle. Oh fuck, hey. And then you end up smoking a joint. Which is awesome. It's a it's a cool event, man. Like I remember standing there, uh, there was a booth that announced, hey, in three minutes we're gonna throw, you know, handfuls of shit into the audience. Basically, you know, we're doing giveaways and all this. And uh I look over the dude standing next to me, he's fought a mic. Him and Ruby are standing there. <laughs> it's like kind of you know, down awesome. joint. Hey, fought a mic. Ruby <laughs> fucking passed the joint with him, you know. Never would have ran into him just anywhere else. Follow their stuff on Instagram, you know. Talk to him here and there on Instagram. But to run into some people that you've been talking to like that at a cup, it, it's it's a cool experience. It's a really cool experience. Oh, I bet, man. I'd love to be able to meet him and smoke first hand with him he's been no he's been he has his own episode and uh, he actually introduced me to the kineos and those people and which was you know an awesome awesome meet and they were you know their addition if you haven't seen them you know that's a good episode to go back and watch for sure but uh yeah 
you could tell I always knew from watching him on on YouTube that what a great dude he was. But then you know that one on one with him on the show, but man, what an honor it would be to actually be able to sit there and pass the joint and shake his hand. Oh, man. Good. Oh yeah, it was it was great. And you know, Fada Mike and Ruby, they're exactly how you see them in their videos and their Instagram and all that. And that's them, man. They're they're no bullshit. They're no they're not hiding something trying to be somebody they're not. They're just cool ass, genuine people that love their life. And I respect that more than anything, you know. There is nothing fake about them. There is nothing unkind about them. They're just the coolest people, man. And I only got to meet them for, you know, five, ten minutes, hanging out at a cup, smoking a joint, talking to them. But they are who they are. And I can't say enough. If you guys don't follow Mike and, and follow Mike and Ruby, you know, you should go check them out. They're, they're good people. They're real good people. Yeah, and that, you know what? That's awesome to see, you know, people that uh, have been around the cannabis plant for so long and still have a genuine love for the plant and a genuine love for each other. It's it's really nice to see. Refreshing to see. Yeah, uh, you don't see that a lot anymore these days, you know? Yeah. In, in both aspects, in, in, you know, in the cannabis aspect and in the, you know, everything else in life aspect. You don't see that in people a lot anymore. And, those two are very genuine people. And the, the one, yeah, it's like I said, the one, last other thing I want to say about it, not the last thing, but uh, uh, is how genuine he is about it. It's He's given away all that knowledge and everything, and he is definitely not uh, trying to do it for a buck, you know what I mean? It's not a spiel. He's not trying to sell you anything. It's uh, everything that I've ever seen. Every conversation has been very, very genuine from a genuine place. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. It really yeah, it is. is. More people need to be that way. I agree. <laughs> so hell yeah, man! You're you're back here, and it's kind of working again. It's welcome back. <laughs> Oof, I'm just. I'm hoping I'm hoping she holds out. You know, all we gotta do is get through this and hopefully through tomorrow and hopefully all solid days after that. There you go. There you go. I'm trying to keep up with chat, but it's kinda hard when but go ahead and uh, spin through there real quick and give some shout outs if you want, man. There's a, a lot of new people that's uh, popped in, man. We were just up to 72 it looks like we dropped one or two but that's all good they'll be back sergeant pepper what's up jack screen stock how you doing tonight i can't uh, see yeah take over brother give them out i'm just scrolling through we just talked about bill stead a little while ago you lucky son of a bitch <laughs> congratulations again man uh chris mertz is here Green again Mountain. sergeant Green pepper Mountain grower Green Mountain Grower. Katie. Katie. Oh, the American one. Oh, oh, yeah. Alex Boykachev. I, hopefully I said that okay. correct. Some of them I get and some of them I can't. You know what this for me it is? It's like, if they're like really long, I think it's like... Um, I'm trying to read it as a sentence, like a lot of Instagram people do. We'll like that together, stupid, like yeah, like that stupid hashtag shit where it's all blended into one thing, and us old motherfuckers are like, dude, put spaces in your words. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't understand oh, I'm it. totally better words. I'm totally guilty of it, but I can't. I, you know, it fucks me up when I'm trying to read it because I can't. I'm trying to read it as a word and read it as a sentence almost, and uh, it doesn't work. No, <laughs> no, not when you're, you know, after like 21, it doesn't work anymore. It's like you can't do it. It just gets more confusing than anything. It's funny. I often find myself uh, asking my kids, like, uh, some of the tax abbreviations and shit. What the fuck is this supposed to mean? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll call my little niece and be like, hey, what the hell does this mean? What's this? Hey, can you find that movie on the internet for me so I can watch it? You know? <laughs> you know, well, 
I want to get what what's up, Mystic Grower. And I want to fucking tell you a funny story right here. Um, this is how fucking far behind at the times I am, and I'm not afraid to admit when I am behind in times. Okay, I won't say the names in this story, but uh, I was added to a chat, you know, about a year ago give a hint anyway wank, wank, about a year ago uh to this chat and uh so i get in there and we're you know conversation is all over the place it's a rabbit hole that day it's a rabbit hole that day that's and, a cool uh, spot though the chat can go down a rabbit hole and it can be really cool so one of the gals that are in the chat says you know it says uh, guys are so fucking weird these days second date on this with this guy and he asked me if i've ever pegged a guy and i'm like <laughs> i'm serious like <laughs> what what I don't even, and I fucking, I actually Googled that shit. <laughs> and the guy, I was like, I was like, oh, that's a thing. You know what I mean? I, if you don't know what it is, I ain't even going to tell you. Google that shit, man. And I was like, oh my God, that's a fucking thing. It is really it's something that happens a lot these days. Oh my God, that's fucking nuts. I was speechless. I didn't even like go back into chat that day. I was like, I don't even know what to say to that shit. You hanging out with the wrong people. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. If you if you ain't got a sense of humor and you can't take a joke, man, that that's oh. something people need to work on because that makes life go around. <laughs> kind of one grower says, "Check, please." That's fucking funny. Ah. Uh, all right, let's get back into the grow a little bit. So when did, uh, uh what was your next attempt? Uh, another outdoor grow? Yeah, I've always, you know, I was always an outdoor grower until everything went legal. Then I went indoors because of the way they wrote the laws. Legalization in California just really f fucked up the outdoor grows. You can't do it here. You can't do it there. I mean, look at the Mendo Dope guys. They've been growing in their personal residence in their backyard legally for God knows how long. And all of a sudden, they get zoned out of where they've been for fucking 15 years. You know? So I went indoor after that. After all that stuff go started happening, I was like, screw it. I have to go indoors. I don't have the money to pay the the stupid state fees to grow my freaking plant. So I'll just go indoor. And I've been indoor ever since, growing like it's outside. <laughs> That's my thing is like, I heard, and I want to give a big shout out to Miss D's Nugs. Nugs, Eagle Nugs, not nuts. Miss D don't have nuts, Eagle. <laughs> but uh, no, she was talking about the other day, you know, like uh, her soil and, and going through and being kind of new to the indoor soil, trying to get it right for what she wants. But and I kept wanting to say that night that f find one thing and learn it and then critique it and then start playing with it after you figure out what's really kind of working for you. Don't just keep, oh, this didn't work, that didn't work, so I'm going to do something completely different next time. No, stick with your original data and improve where you need to improve or, or scale down where you need to and and things will just come around a lot faster than jumping around trying to go from, well, this method to that method to this method or this soil mixture to that soil mixture, or, Oh, maybe I'll take these four and mix those together. And you're just doing yourself more frustrations and, and harm instead of just taking one thing and, and kind of figuring that out all the way through the end. And then you kind of start tweaking it and adding and mixing in certain parts of this recipe from that. And that'll save you a lot of stress in the long run. 
And that's kind of what I do. You know, I, I found what works for me inside the best, what gets me the results that I want. You know, it's, I'm not giving my stuff to anybody. I'm not selling it. I'm, you know, none of that. I'm a personal grower. I grow what I smoke. I flower one plant at a time. You know, a lot of people think, you know, oh, well, I'm growing. I need to have 30 plants and flower. Well, no, you don't. Have one or two that you can take care of the right way and get them really to that, that peaked out perfect point to where they're, they're best they're going to get for that strain. And when you work with that one thing and then you start varying, you'll learn that one plant needs more of, you know, whatever than another plant does and your nitrogen's off in this, but this one's, you know, sucking up nitrogen like crazy. You kind of learn and you can manipulate it from there. And once you figure all that out with your soil, it just turns out great. And it becomes like a, a revolving thing. Every time you make a batch of soil or every time you grow a plant, you know, using that same method and that same additives and, and whatever you're using, if you're using chemical, you know, mixing in with your soil, like people do, if you're using, you know, like me, I use all the uh, down to earth products and make my super soil, you know, and if you're top dressing with that or whatever, just stick with that method until you figure it out and what's working. Don't jump around. Don't jump around. Great advice. Great advice. It is. And that's the kind of where I was getting with that too is the guys there at the grocery store are so quick to, you know, throw you those samples, confuse you, and keep you in your garden in chaos because that's good business for them. You coming back chasing products and, you know, it's almost a big pharma scenario, <laughs> realistically. They want right. it. They want you back. They, yeah, they want to sell you this product or that product or this product because, you know, in the end, all it really comes down to is they get a great deal on it and they're making money on it. It's not going to help you. And, and some of them might even hurt your grow more than others. But, you know, it's the people at the grow shop. So they got to be right. You know, they got to know about it. They got to have some insider information. But they really don't, you know. They're just selling shit that they know they're making a good profit on. They don't care. But if you use what you know works, you're not going to have those problems. It's total the same thing with the fucking doctors as, you know, the grocers, in my opinion. Uh, you get the reps that come out there. Here's some free samples. Here's some free shit. Right. You know, put this out. Sell this. To hook you up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's happening with your medicine same thing here's uh we're we're prozac give out some pens here's some pads fucking some free samples you get yeah. right out enough of these scripts we'll take you to fucking cross country blah, blah, yeah. blah. we'll fly you to fucking paris for dinner and rome for you know dinner the next night and then you're gonna go to greece on us just for selling their product you know and yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's the same with these grill shops, you know. Like you see them doing, uh, I don't know about the, I can't speak for any others except for the few that are around here. But they're doing like, oh, you know, win a giveaway. We'll take you fishing for, you know, 14 days or whatever. Win a trip on this freaking long range fishing boat. It's like all they're doing is like trying to get you in there to buy more shit and more shit and more shit and more shit that you don't need. That's going to screw you up in the end. Stick to what you know. Stick to what you like. Uh, as the organics people would say, nothing beats simplicity. <laughs> you know, just right. showing up, loving it, watering it. Right. You know, well, the way I look at it is like, you know, the biggest plants on the planet are the sequoias and the redwoods. And nobody's feeding them anything. Uh and they're two, 300 feet tall, and you can drive a car through the middle of some of them. You know, it's a tourist attraction in Yellowstone, or excuse me, Yosemite, to drive a car through a freaking tree. And they've never got anything from the grocery store. So, you know, make your soil that way. The redwoods <laughs> need what they want, and they're not getting nothing. Figure out what they're doing. 
at some point in my life, I hope to make it out there to see some of them uh, giant redwoods. Uh, that would be amazing. amazing. Oh, dude. It's, it's a beautiful place, man. California is a beautiful state in that aspect. But, you know, socially, this state sucks. I will, don't move here. <laughs> if you live here, I know you've already thought about leaving. But, you know, don't move here. You know, you'll not be happy. Uh, it's a nice place. I, I'm sure it's a beautiful place, but I, I would want it to be. I'm not a, a city person anymore. That anymore. I like to be on the outskirts and go where I can visit. But uh, you know, just visit. I'd like to be more in the mountains or whatever. Probably where the you know better parts of California. But anymore, I'm sure to get a hunk of that land would probably take you know everything I got to get there. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I, well, we're in the, I'm in the same boat as you are. You know, I, I hate the city life. I hate it. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm nowhere close to the city either. I mean, we're close, you know, we drive home from it and get away from it, but it ain't here. And it's nice. The more I, the more I live out here, the more I like it, the more I'm happy. Everything's quiet, peaceful. You don't have all the bullshit and stress. It's kind of nice. You wouldn't be able to have that big water fun. No, nope. I know you like to have. You can't have that, in Michigan. Well, you we got some nice sized lakes here, but nothing like uh, the way you like to play over there in California. That's oh, sure. dude, I'm going freaking nuts. I'm like scratching at the walls because you know we can't even go fish right now, and I'm I'm like walking circles in the house. The other day, I was casting tennis balls to the dogs and freaking reeling in the dog. <laughs> So, you know. So, you can't even fish out there? No, you can't. So, if you want to go out and take your own private boat out in the ocean and go fish, that's fine. But if you get stopped by Coast Guard or, you know, fishing game or, you know, whoever, every ID on that boat better be from the same address or you're getting a $1,000 fine per person. So, it's kind of bullshit. Things are starting to open up a little bit more, but... You know, they still want the social distancing bullshit, which if you got a Home Depot or Walmart or Target or your local grocery store, you'll see it's not really happening. So it's still shut down. We really can't go fish and I'm going fucking crazy. I'm going crazy. I'm pissing my wife off. <laughs> she wants the fucking fishing charters to start opening up because she's about ready to kick me in the nuts. <laughs> she's calling and making reservations for you, huh? Oh, that's the thing, though, dude, is, is she does. She does. I'll come home. She'll know I had a bad week at work or whatever. Or it's just stressful, you know. I'm coming home Friday night, tired and sore, and she knows it. And she'll text me at, like, 3 o'clock and be like, hey, check your email. What do you mean check my email? I'm at work. She no, check your email. So I'll check my email real quick at work. And she's got me booked on a trip for that night. And it's like, right when I see that, it's like, I know why I married her. That was a good choice. <laughs> that was a good choice. Sounds like you've got a great gal there. That's for sure. Sounds like you've yeah. got a great gal. Yeah, I got lucky on that one. She definitely was, yeah. She she got the short end of that deal. <laughs> so was there any uh, struggles from growing outside coming into indoors? There's Obviously, a lot I would think uh, trying to keep them small. <laughs> the first thought, I guess, would come to mind. Was that a problem? Trying to scale her back down to it's uh, an problem. indoor scale? It's still a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I'm still trying to grow a tree inside of a freaking four by four tent. You know, and you can't grow a freaking tree in a tent. It just doesn't work. You know, you can only move the lights up so far, and you can't move the roof. So. I don't know. It was really difficult. It still is to know that, you know, you got to keep stuff smaller <laughs> indoor. Outdoor, you can just let it go and go and go. And you want to see it go and go and go. And you don't care if it takes, you know, until September, until it goes into flower, you know. But indoor, it's like you try to do the same thing. Just let it go and go and go and go. And all of a sudden you're going, oh, shit, I'm out of room. <laughs> what do I do with this thing? It's like falling over on itself. And I got nothing left to tie it to. 
Yeah, yeah, they can be problems indoors, that's for sure. It's definitely. I know. I, I, it can be. It can be. So what uh, you obviously sounds like you're growing in the super soil over there. Uh, what kind of lights are you uh, utilizing and stuff over there? So I need to get new lights actually, um, and I'm supposed to be getting uh, some lights from a guy. But you know we were going to trade cuts for lights, and I got the cuts sitting here ready for him, and I haven't heard from him. So, you know, and he, he's far. It's, I agreed to meet him halfway because we we're going to trade lights for cuts. But I'm not driving, you know, two hours when I haven't heard from the guy. So, but right now I'm using uh, in my veg. Uh, I just got a T5, eight bulb T5 over my veg and my mom's. And I got all my mom's, my little teens, my clones all in one tank because I'm like the space you have right behind you. I have less for both rooms. So I got to make do with what I got, you know, and that's kind of where my indoor styles come into is that anybody can go put a seed in the ground and pour some water on it and get a half ass plant. You know, it's going to grow. It's going to live as long as it's got, you know, some of the shit that it needs. It might not do great, but it's going to live. Indoor, it's a whole different deal because now I got to make sure it has everything. You know, outside, it's got all this natural stuff, you know. You plant it in the ground and, you know, look at all the shrubs and hedges and bushes and trees that have been around that area for how no, you know, how long and nobody takes care of them and, you know, you're out in the woods somewhere. It's all going to grow somehow, some way. So you, you get that in your mind and then you try to go indoor and it's like, wait a minute, I can't do that. You know, now I got to mix all this stuff in the natural soil into my store-bought, whatever that might be on the label in the bag soil. And you don't know what you're getting. You don't know what you're missing. So when I found uh, Sub's Super Soil, I tried it and I got the results I wanted. It worked. You know, the plants were happy. They grew through. They, they flowered out really nice. You could smell them. They, you know, you'd see just the colors in them and it actually looked good, smelled good, grew good. So I stuck with it. And I just started tweaking it a little bit here and there, depending on what I was growing and what it needed. You know, if it needed more nitrogen, I'd add more nitrogen. If it was, you know, you could tell it was calcium deficient, I'd put more calciums in the soils and, you know, dry it that way. And it's just getting better and better. And that's why, like I say, you know, just stick to one thing and get it down. And once you get your way, what works for you with your environment because you know i could grow that like that cuvee you know that's going to grow different in your house than it's going to grow at my grow house so you know stick to what you know and do it and just learn it and it'll get better and better and better yeah, i agree a lot of times I, like you said that uh, super soil recipe uh it, it comes with tweaking you know what i mean uh, a lot of people run it as is, but the people that have run it yeah, over time have definitely tweaked it in their own way, you know, different blood meals, bone meals, whatever, different yeah. source material, and uh, all that makes, you know, differences, you know? And, uh, yeah. Well, and so it takes himself. a minute to find it. I'm sorry, brother, go ahead. I you, no, I was going to say, like, Sub himself, you know, he got the original recipe from Vic High, and then he found out what worked from Vic's soil and what he needed for what he wanted and kind of tweaked it from Vic High stuff into his soil recipe. So, you know, and that was the whole thing with Subcool. It was like everything he put out, he wanted carried on. You know, he wanted to put that knowledge so that you could learn from his mistakes and his trial and errors, you know. So when I found his soil recipe, I started growing, you know, growing in that. And then I started watching, you know, the weed nerd and his lives on Instagram and all that. And I was, he'd talk about his super soil. But then I heard he was, you know, he's saying, oh, I'm adding this or I'm adding that or I'm putting this in. And I started figuring out after that, that, you know, hey, okay, it's meant to be played with. Tailor it to what you, what your needs are. You know, because I'm not growing, you know, something sub growing. I'm growing something that I was able to get. So... 
each thing's good, you know, each plant's going to need a little bit different something. So the, the super soil has really worked for me because I can say like my, my meadow breath mother really eats a lot of nitrogen. And I don't know if you noticed that in the uh, Mendo Loco, but it was a hungry bitch. So I know that with, if I'm mixing up soil for that, I got to mix it different than I will with my local motion. And that's just from experience of growing those two out, you know, and knowing what they do and how they act. So I just try, I just try to keep my base, you know, super soil recipes and tailor them to whatever I need. If I need more nitrogen in one, if I need more, you know, calcium or phosphorus or something in another, and you can tell, you know, you add it in on the next run or you subtract it from the next run. And after a few runs, you figure out that, okay, you know, this cuvee loves this, 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 and this, but that nine pound hammer likes a little more of this and a little less of that. So you can tailor it all and it works way better in the end. You save yourself so much trouble, especially for somebody like me that keeps mothers and runs them, you know, a few different times. It helps you a lot. By the time, you know, you run it three, four times, it's getting better and better and better. And it's the same cut. Well, it's definitely ahead. What's going on in that soil definitely is the overall turf profile. Yeah, sure. Hands down. Uh, things that are happening in organic and uh, super soil systems, uh, I'm quickly finding out that uh, can be matched in just cocoa and salts. You know, you just that micro that microorganisms mycos a whole fungus right. aspect of it there's it's just missing out so much that uh is a valuable input well and see i don't consider myself like a, a organic grower you know I, I don't care about that stupid title and i don't want to get caught up in the organic versus non-organic because i don't care if you're organic you're organic if you're not you're not you're growing, that's the main point. Who cares if I'm growing different than you or you're in a different system than me or you call yours this or I call mine that. Just, you know, it, it's all the same. You're growing. So, you know, I just grow in my soil the way that I know that works. And that's just how I do it, you know. Nothing wrong with that. So, uh, what kind of things do you offer up for like IPM over there? You don't mind me asking. You know, I don't use any any products at all, other than like the stuff in my soils. Um, I will spray once in a blue moon because my my biggest thing is like I try to keep everything out that I can. If it can't get in, I mean, you're going to get something in there, you know, here and there, but. If you do your damnedest to, to not let things in, you're not going to really have to fight them off as bad as you would if you let them in. So I'll use like, uh, I'll spray some stuff like Caterpillar spray in there once in a while, just in case, because, you know, we do get it. We're in the freaking middle of nowhere. You know, you get random shit that'll get sucked in through your air vents or whatever. So, but I try to use uh, like Safer brand for the Caterpillar killer just to, spray it like once maybe twice through its lifetime and uh that's probably about it you know just want to shout out uh we lose uh, jumping in tonight he's here almost every night so I had to uh, give him a shout out there Okay, give props to the people that come every night, man. I just, uh, yeah, so much. Night after night after night. Takes me back every every time, every night. Or twenty four twenty is giving you. I don't know if you've a chance to keep up. Has given you much props throughout the night as well. <laughs> just want to point that out. I haven't. Uh, I haven't really been able to keep up with chat. I'm. I'm kind of. I call myself tech tarted, 
because you know I got to call the little kids to help me like figure out how to work my cell phone. So I'm trying to use two devices and it's just not working too well. So props to everybody in chat. Yeah, it's one of them things too. It's a bummer because uh, it's nice to uh, to address them as they show. Yeah, trust us quite a bit as the night has went gone. Much love for that. Man. Just feels so good to be back on, way hanging out again. It really does. I, I I hate to revert back to that shit, but man, Ugh. it's like a smoke that to be your friend. Out. You know, come off from work and hang out and talk shit with Eagle and talk shit with Chat and just hang out and smoke. It's great. It's great. Like, so uh, let's see here. We talked a little bit about your veg. <laughs> you said you know really care yeah, too much about cloning. Any cloning tips? Have you learned in your stumble and falls on the cloning? Oh, dude, I just had the freaking major nightmare with a clone uh, right now. Actually, I'm dealing with it. Yeah, for some reason, uh, you know. Cloning, if you do it right, is pretty simple, you know. But once in a while, you get fucked up somehow, and I got fucked up right now. I uh, put my nine pound that I got from you actually is in flour. That big, it's huge. I put it into a tree in the flour. But uh, I always take cuts and make sure they root, make sure they start going. You know, get them in some soil. You can get them alive, you know, and and then I'll put the mother into flower everything was going great and all of a sudden now these cuts are starting to look like shit and something's going wrong with them so it happens it happens yeah you're gonna try to you said you're gonna try to take one back from mom or the, from the flowering plant yeah I, I tried i tried we'll see what happens i've heard of people doing that i've never done it myself Oh, so, I'm, I'm, times. yeah, I've I'm actually hoping. brought nine back from my bud once or twice. That's what I'm trying to do with mine right now. <laughs> it's like it's getting okay. pretty close to the end, and I'm, I'm hoping it takes. Hopefully, she does. Yeah, she's in other places, she's well kept. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, it, it's funny because uh, my Mendo cut that I have, my Mendo breath. I actually passed that along to somebody and I lost it. I lost that cut and uh, happened to get a hold of him. I was like, hey, man, do you still have that cut by any chance? This dude, I got one. It's a teen, but it's ready to take a whole bunch of cuts. And he, you know, actually dropped it off to me, which was freaking awesome. So, it is pretty cool. cool having cuts, you know. Dr. Dakenstein is checking out as well. Good night, good sir. Thank you for uh, tuning in as well. So yeah, so my veg, you know, I, we talked about that. It's it's right now. I'm I'm doing the pheno hunt for. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to say the male yet, just in case you know. I kind of respect the breeder and don't want to let you know the cat out of the bag yet on what it is but that mendo loco <laughs> i'm uh looking for a male to cross that with so my my veg right now is just overflowing i i probably popped too many I'm trying to you know hunt two at the same time <laughs> for a male and a female of both you know so the veg is doing all right but my flower uh like i was saying earlier you know i just flower one at a time usually and it works pretty good i got a 600 HPS and a little four by four that I flower in. And, uh, you know, when I transition from my bedroom to my flower room, I don't have to do anything different other than the light cycle, really, because the soil's already got everything in it. It's already going to transition to what it needs. So it kind of works out great for that one plant because you can get it bigger. And for me, you know, just coming from an outdoor background, it's like it's always funner to get it bigger indoors. 
so that one one plant in the four by four works pretty good you can kind of grow a little bush how do you like your 600s there we were talking about them the other day how uh they were almost too uh, that was definitely too much for a four by four but uh most you know older growers like six 600s man they've always been very complimentary of the old 600 man. yeah yeah i like the 600 um i learned a few lessons with the thawie <laughs> i got a funny story on that one uh years ago uh me and a couple of my cousins decided we were going to do this indoor hydro thing just random out of the blue so we found uh a forum on 420 magazine i think it was called the website all about like this bubble ponics and shit way back in the day. So we had this little shed that was like four feet wide, two feet deep, maybe three at the most, four feet high. So we packed 18 plants in there with a thowie. <laughs> and dude, it got so hot so quick that we ended up cutting the sides of the sheds off and trying to put dark screen over it and do everything we could to get airflow. And then all of a sudden you open the door and they're just falling out on you. So after that, it was like, okay, no more Thowie. That was just a fuck show. And no more plants that, you know, in that small of a space. <laughs> yeah, they, it can happen. It can happen. And it sucks that that thousand water can get out of control. Though. That's man, the LEDs, though, man. I'm ready to pull these gals down here in time real soon. Yeah. Switch it all over to LED, I think, you know? Yeah. Time that's a, has arrived. Well, the, the HPS and the metal halide and all those, they just eat your electric bill, you know? I don't know about where you guys are all at, but here, man, power is not cheap. I can't afford to run that Thowie. That thing's like $400 a month by itself to run. And that's just not worth it. Really? That's oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're I paying like. Think... Go ahead. Uh, we're Go paying ahead. like almost fifty cents a uh, kilowatt hour here at certain times a day. So you get kind of screwed on your power bills out here. So I'm I'm getting rid of that six hundred pretty quick here and get some uh, more efficient light that draws a lot less power. A lot less heat too. A lot less yeah. heat. Yeah. And that's, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, but that 600 does really good. You know, if, if you can run it and your electric bill is not $400, run it. You know, it works great in a four by four. But you got to get rid of the heat too. So what I do is I kind of got my setup with my fans and my venting similar to what you got, how one feeds another. You know, you're pulling the heat out of one room to, to warm up another room. I'm kind of doing the same thing for my flower over into my veg. And uh, I'm pulling my light with my intake for my veg fan. It's coming through one side of my light and my exhaust on my flower room is coming into the other. So it's constantly circulating that air, but man, it still gets hot. It still gets hot in there. Can I kazoo kush? Yeah, yeah, it's pulling it back to a 600. There's tons of benefits in the smaller space. But yeah. if, we, if you could, I, I didn't start out with an LED. You never said that like fucking eight years ago and shit. We were all like, eh. Well, you know, and I got two, yeah. I got two other 600s just sitting on a shelf and I keep trying to talk myself into, well, maybe I'll just put them on their sides like the old Phototron type style, you know, hang them down facing each other on the sides of the plant. But man, <laughs> that would just kill it. It'd be too much. Just one, the one 600 and a four by four is perfect. Yeah. I agree. But yeah, I want to, I want to go to a, a good uh, LED style because that power bill is just killing me. Yeah. I can't believe that. That 450, man, that pretty much uh, supplies that's a good part of my grow right there you know what I mean uh, it's not a majority of what I pay for a month not just one light and shit that god that can take me out right quick 
Oh, yeah, it's man. ridiculous, man. Like, uh, 1800 bucks to run that four lights be hungry. Holy fuck. They'd be loving me. <laughs> I don't know if they'd be loving me or hating me over there. Uh, California's yeah, it's, always been like that, though, haven't they, about their power? Oh, man, it's it's ridiculous out here. Gas and power is just ridiculous. Like We could charge more after work when everybody's getting home until everybody goes to bed. So, you know, the typical American family, you know, mom and dad get home, cook dinner, hang out with the kids for a while. Maybe mom throws some laundry in the freaking washer and mom and dad watch the news and go to bed. Well, that time of day, we're paying the most for our power, which is ridiculous. All day long, it's cheaper. And then right when people start getting home from work, they charge you more because they know you're home. It kind of sucks. So, and, you know, trying to schedule your light cycle around that just really sucks. You know, it's like my lights come on at freaking five in the morning and go off at five in the evening before I get up and can't go look at them because I got to get up, get ready to go to work or right when I get off work and I can't go look at them because they're dark, you know? So the, the whole thing just kind of screws you up. So that, that 600, you know, we just can't afford it out here. It's got to go. Oh, I didn't fucking, Jack's like, Eagle, you had no idea that it was expensive in Cali? No, I didn't, man. I really didn't. I knew it was expensive, but I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, I run my, to be, this is honestly here, so get to run my whole grow here with my, all my LEDs, this 4K behind me, all the fans and all that shit, plus the house in the middle of the fucking winter, 650 Fuck. A month. <laughs> Fuck. No. <laughs> Our bill, it's just two of us here. It's just me and my wife. And our bill is like 450 bucks. And that's in the winter when we're not using the AC. You know, once we got to use the air conditioning, then it goes up to like six, 700 bucks a month. So I need to get rid of that light because that's just, that's 300 bucks of it, three to 400 bucks of it, you know? That's crazy. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Everything here is freaking ridiculously expensive. Everything. Our gas prices out here are ridiculous, man. It cost me a hundred dollars to fill up my truck. That ain't right. Hundred freaking bucks. What is it? What's gas there today? Um, I just went today too and filled up the work truck. It was like, it was actually low, but it was like three twenty-five. That's crazy. I'm up north. And uh, it's usually more expensive up here where I'm at. And it was the dollar eighty six here. Jesus Christ. Dude. Go downstate, and I guarantee it's thirty cents cheaper downstate. Usually I haven't anyway. I haven't been able to put, you know, a dollar eighty six gas in my car since I was like twenty years old. It's ridiculous out here. It's absolutely ridiculous. It wasn't not too long ago. We were down to like a dollar thirty-five. We actually for a minute, like three days, we had some like dollar thirty-five gas. I'm running around filling up like everything. <laughs> right. Top off the generators. We're coming on storm season and shit. <laughs> Load up all the gas. This is it ain't gonna last forever. Filled up all the cars, mower, everything. Oh, everything. Everything. Put some in reserve. <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny. Uh, a few years back, a bunch of us were going up to Laughlin, which is uh, right outside Vegas. It's on the river between uh, Arizona and Nevada, right? If you've never been there, you've never heard of Laughlin. But we we're getting ready to go to Laughlin. We're driving up. And uh, my buddy's like, yeah, I'll drive. Um you guys get the room, I'll pay for gas. And we told him, like, all right, dude, go get gas tonight because we're leaving at, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning. And he's like, no, I'll just stop and get it on the way out. Well, it was like three fifty that night. And we pull into the gas station the next morning, and it was 5 bucks. And that was like, uh, that was one of those stupid deals where, oh, there's a problem with one of the gas plants and the pipeline's down, so we're going to charge you twice as much now. 
you know, it's bullshit. But it was kind of funny. Told him to fill up the night before for three fifty, and the next morning it's five bucks. I thought it was great. He thought he was getting a deal by uh, paying for gas and not the hotel rooms. Yeah, how's that work though? I mean, seriously, uh, you—they want us basically, you know, we to pay for the repair on the infrastructure there. If you were to like, if you were delivering some goods to somebody and your truck broke down and then you added like say the price of a transmission <laughs> to right. that transaction they'd be like what the fuck are you doing man well, oh, right. no, I broke down on the way here just thought you'd pay for it yeah uh, oh, we know you ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon but uh, you know the truck hit somebody so you're paying the insurance claim it was yeah. your product they're delivering that's yeah. what they're doing with their gas out here man ridiculous no. No. do you guys have, uh, do you guys have to switch in the summer and winter like a different blend no no not that i've heard of that and i, I laughed when i heard of that shit For summer yeah. and winter gas what the fuck is that yeah what's the difference man it's a little hotter here in the summer yeah that's that's crazy shit plus yeah, not to mention you guys got uh like all the restrictions on uh emissions and shit out there another way to restrict and cost you guys some more money oh it's ridiculous yeah it, it's absolutely ridiculous like they outlawed uh flow master exhaust in california there's certain flow masters you can't get you know tell me one dude that drives a ford ranger that didn't put a flow master on it you know they're everywhere but california you can't have it as a matter of fact, like my dirt bikes, they give you this, you know, you got to buy your little off-road registration for your dirt bikes, but they block you from riding certain spots at certain times of the year, depending on your emissions and the sound. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's so stupid here, man. So stupid. It's crazy. So. It's yeah, the states. Me, uh, things can change like just from, you know. It's not like you guys are across the world or anything. You know what I mean? Right. Even city to city shit changes, though. Yeah, that, 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 they fuck things up. Even, like, in the weed aspect like that, you can't even keep your laws straight from county to county over there, right? Different oh, they can't laws keep for different counties. Oh, it's not even county. It's, like, suburb to suburb. You know, like... So you got like downtown San Diego, right? And then you got like all the little cities that surround it, the little suburbs and different little whatevers, right? They all got different laws. So you could live on the border of one city and be totally, completely cool. Like a buddy of mine, his front yard is one zip code, his backyards are different. So he can grow something in his front yard that he can't grow in his backyard. Just because, you know, different jurisdiction has different laws. It's really, really stupid out here. Really stupid. So, you know, it forced a lot of people to just kind of hide and go indoor. Keep it low key and go indoor. Keep doing your thing. It's kind of a bummer where you can be doing it uh, great outdoors there. Well, it's coming from the guy that says he won't grow outdoors. <laughs> well, <laughs> I keep taunting myself though. Everybody keeps saying, like, you know, you should put one outdoors this year. I, I've thought about it, man. I keep, I, there's one over there that's getting a little, bit, a little bit too big. And I'm thinking, I don't like to throw that bitch outside. But then a little voice in my head says, I don't know, you don't want to do that. Well, is it, uh, are you guys okay to do that there or no? Yeah, yeah, it's legal to do. Oh, then why the hell not? Because uh, I'm, I'm just kind of worried about uh, bringing uh, unwanted attention to myself. Managed to stay under the radar all these years. Why, you know, go throw a plan out there and then suddenly, you know, the neighborhood stinks like weed when it never did. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. That's understandable. Yeah, I can, I can like, like. They're actually. I don't uh, know who's going 
my, I heard today that not so far away from here, uh, I should say, yeah, really far away from here. Right. <laughs> uh, they were uh, making a big stink today about somebody growing weed uh, on the other side of the lake there. And uh, neighbors and everybody talking about how it stinks so bad. And they were trying to drum out the guy's grow. You know, and I'm thinking that's just bullshit. Sucks, First of all, I thought, well, obviously the guy is just because it's legal, it's showing no you know, regard to where, right. you know, obviously he, before everybody were running some type of filters. He yeah. must not be running no filters at all or nothing because you're just putting like, a big flashing neon sign at your front door. Yeah, either that's what I thought too. It's either, yeah, he's quite open about his grow there, which again, you know, if you're legal, you know, whatever, and you think you're secure and letting everybody know where you're at and all that shit. Yeah, okay. But, uh, yeah, I just don't think I would want that kind of trouble. It could also be maybe he just pissed somebody off in that town and you know, got a bunch of people on board with it now. I don't know, but yeah. it sure was a big stink today. That's funny. You know, I've always said, like, uh, as a grower, you know, if you want to know who the douchebags in your neighborhood are and who the, the complainers and the whiners and the criers, download the Nextdoor app and start uh, just following Nextdoor in your own neighborhood. It's pretty funny the things you learn about your neighbors. What's that do? So it's Surely. like a little... So next, you guys have never heard of Nextdoor. Okay, so you download no. Next, right? It's just uh, like a social media app, right? But it's linked in by your your zip code or your little community or whatever. So it's just like a little private thing between the neighborhood. Like a little neighborhood news. Like, you know, oh, Betty Sue's cat's missing. Or, you know, hey, that idiot that almost ran me over when I was mowing my lawn. You know, you know things like that. But you learn real quick who your neighbors are, which is a great thing to know. Never heard of it. I'll have to check it out and see who's uh, playing around in these neck of the woods. Yeah, check it out. It's cool. It's kind of like a little neighborhood watch type thing, but it's, you know, all the people that are pissed off express it. And if they got something to say, they'll say it. You know, it's, it's kind of funny to, to scroll through it and see what your neighbors are talking about. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you just don't want to know, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you're like, okay, well, I know I uh, got to avoid that neighbor. They're a dick, <laughs> you know. But see, I'm, I'm in a little community where, like, we don't even have anything where we're at. You know, we got one little, I guess you can call it a liquor store and a taco shop, and that's about it. That's all that's here. Everything else, you got to drive for it, so. Well, that's me too, brother. That's me too. Yeah. So, you know, those neighbors down the way that you don't really know too well, you jump on there and you can kind of see what they're talking about and who they really are, you know, if you need to avoid them or not. It's funny. I just think, it, you know, think about it. People don't know, you know, talk about problems or whatever, but big city problems. I guarantee in the city you've never fucking went to your local party store and like out of your one fucking gem of paper. So you got to fucking you know, take a fucking hour and a half roll or four. It's for me, it's an hour and a half because it's 45 minutes, one direction and, you know, 45 back. Uh, you know, go get a pack of papers and shit from the smoke shop and shit. It can uh, set a day back, but yeah. hopefully you take some for the ride back. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got your last two, you can roll one for there, one for on the way home. <laughs> At least one for the ride home. Right. It's fucking joking in Walmart anymore. It's like a fiver fiver trip. <laughs> Two yeah. there, three for the way back. Right, right. All back roads. <laughs> Enjoy the tree. Enjoy the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where we're at here too. But it's worth it. It is too, man. There's such a pretty view around here, and it's kind of being a 
fucked up very quickly with like deforestation and shit up here. It's sad. Oh, that sucks, man. That sucks. You know, I think if they're gonna like start doing that, they should start looking into other sources, you know, other materials. Because uh, they're not yeah. gonna have that. It's like who they do? They move. That seems like what's going on, man. They just tap one out and uh, buy another into another state and then start yeah. the regrowth of that one and move on. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, uh, what else do you want to know about my growing? Well, uh, anything you want to tell Let's me? Yeah. You guys got any questions? What do you uh, like to grow? Well, what have you, what's your, been your favorite to grow so far? Let's go there. Tell Chad has some questions. Uh, so far, I, th I think my favorite to grow, um, I'd have to say that Mendo Breath Mother that I have, just because I've had her for so absolutely long that there's just, I don't know, it's just kind of like a connection with her, you know? So I, I think that's probably my favorite as a grower aspect of it. As uh, other aspects, I like the Joshua tree just because that thing's a freaking, the tree in it is true. That thing's a beast. That's a good uh, strain too. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, as a, you know, just like a grow for fun, I like that Joshua tree. It's a fun grow. So is there any manipulation tricks that you like to use in flower and you uh, delete fan? Do you like to give it a little pop with the super crop techniques? No, you know, it's kind of weird. I kind of, I say like almost that I'm a lazy grower just for the fact that like, I don't do all the defoliation. I don't do all the, you know, I'll pick off leaves here and there. You know, if one's not looking great, I'll take those off. If, you know, a, a nug that looks like it's not getting light, that could be really good. I'll take one off above it or, you know, get some more light to it. But as far as like leaf strip and all that, I really don't. I mean, I'm still in the mindset that, you know, I didn't do that when I was outdoor and I got, you know, got great yields. So why change what I knew? You know, I'm, I'm changing the environment, but the style is kind of still helping me. You know, it works for what I want in the end product. So what, uh, how do you like to dry? What's your drying technique like there? Yeah, my drying technique is a nightmare. <laughs> my, dry, my dry technique lately is hope and pray. <laughs> um, I don't really have a good spot right now to dry. So I got to either use my flower tent or set up a little makeshift something but the the heat swings that we get when i seem like if i chop down a plant it's going to go from 65 degrees and perfect humidity to 112 the next day so you know whereas i should be hanging for like you know seven eight nine days it's like i hang it up leave it there overnight go to work the next day come back and it's like crunchy that's got to be tough to master there. It's really hard, yeah. So when it when it comes to like my dry, it's just a fight the system type of a game, you know. Be on top of it, check it multiple times a day if you can, because uh, where I have to dry, it'll either take a long time if I get lucky and like uh, you know end up with a harvest between like Thanksgiving and Christmas, then it's not a real big problem because it's nice and cool outside. And, I don't get all that heat, but from now all the way up until then, it's just shot in the dark. You know, hope and pray that, you know, the ganja gods are on your side and let you have the weather you need to let it dry right. As Jack's point out there, it's good to uh, utilize one of those herbs now machines. That's, uh, they're not a bad product, really. Yeah, I've been looking at that. I was I was actually wanting to talk to you about that because uh, I know you you like you love it. You use it a lot. I've seen the posts and all that you've done on it, and I'm really thinking about going that route because I'm just having massive problems where I'm at with dry. 
Well, that it would definitely help you out. And they're going to be back on the show probably next week. <sighs> he uh, had a bunch of uh, lab tests done, you know, confirming all uh, what he's been saying. So uh, he's anxious to come spread the good news on all the results that he's had. And I believe he might be even be announcing the, the second gen of the Earth's now machine, too. Oh, nice. But, uh, it, it works. It will help you in both aspects there as, as far as slowing it down, you know, on them days when it's too dry, 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 because you can utilize that. There's like a moisture shot that comes with right. it. And it's like a tall shot that you can drop in between the trays to add moisture to it and keep a slower pace. Or if it's in the moisture times where it's like super humidity, you don't even need the shot. You're just on a regular drying scale or uh, uh, time scale then. And uh, it really works out pretty nice as far as space goes because it only takes up uh, you know, yeah, 16 small. by 16 space, 16 by 16 inch space, you know, by maybe, you know, 20 inches tall at best. And then you can dry up to, you know, 10 ounces easy in that, eat, that thing. For you, it sounds like that'd be about perfect for your one plant. Oh yeah. Yeah, it would because uh you know, I everybody thinks that, you know, humidity is gonna be the same everywhere, but it's not, you know, like God, no. our humidity out here will be dropped down to like, you know, four or five percent for weeks. So, you know, it's really hard to not suck all that moisture out of whatever you got hanging up drying. It just goes quick, you know, within a day you can get screwed. And it'll get too hot, and the humidity will drop, and it'll just suck everything out in one day. So, um, yes, throwing them up and hanging them, and just hanging them. You're, you're breaking up on that one. I can barely hear you. I said, are you, uh, when you take them down, are you just hanging them, or are you uh, trimming them up before you hang them? Are you hanging them? I guess that would be another question there. Yeah, I do hang everything. I do hang everything. And I try to trim it down. Um, you know, people, that's the other one that always goes back and forth, wet trim, dry trim, right? What do you, you know, do you wet trim? Oh, you suck. Do you dry trim? Oh, you suck. You know, it goes either way. But um, I do both. I start trimming right when I cut them down. And uh, it ends up that by the time I'm done, they're dry sometimes overdried, you know, if I don't jump on it right away or, you know, the weather goes crazy and it, you know, goes up to 110 one day and, you know, the, the day before or the week before it was 65 and perfect, you know, it's, you start out wet so that you don't have to uh, lose anything when you end up all dried out. Uh, trying to breed back at 42020 there uh, you can start out with the shot but it really depends on your humidity you know the environment that you're in if you're under 50 yeah I would most definitely start out with a moisture shot to uh, carry it through the distance there but if you're over 50 you know 60 to 70 percent yeah I'd definitely pass on putting that moisture shot on that's for sure yeah, I, I'm definitely looking into uh, ordering one of those because uh, I think that's the only aspect now that I really need to dial in is, is making sure everything dries right and that thing looks like it's it. Well, what I was kind of getting to there too is uh, when I asked you about uh, trimming and no trimming there, it seemed like when the, you're into the times where uh, you're down to the low, low humidity there and you don't have an herbs dryer that... Uh, might be uh, beneficial as much as I hate to say this because I hate dry trimming. <laughs> right. I absolutely hate dry trimming. But if I were in your spot and I didn't have a dryer and all that, um, I would think maybe it would benefit you to leave everything on there, even the uh, fan leaves and everything because they're carrying that extra moisture that would uh, help buy you some time and probably even surround them nugs, you know, holding in some moisture as well oh yeah i've, I've tried everything uh, from uh i've done everything but hang the damn thing upside down while it's still in the in the pot in the soil 
<laughs> but I, I might try that next. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, it's, that'd suck. The humidity, because, uh, you know, it gets really, really hot, because I'm kind of stuck into the garage, you know? And it gets really hot out there in the summertime, and that's usually when I end up harvesting. And that's because I have a tendency to veg way too long. Just something about it. I like that veg. Uh, I like to, I'll veg for like three, four months. And then flip. It's kind of common, though, about uh, uh, the summertime growth there. I mean, most people, unless you're dumping a lot of money into that grow during them, you know, two, three months of the year, uh, that's usually, you know, you're, eh, it's good, but not but your best months. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, Michigan, yeah, I know everybody, I know their fire comes from fall, winter, spring months. You yeah. Know, and it's kind of when you're fighting them, Michigan temperatures, you know, it sucks. Yeah, it's, it's the same here. You know, I get better stuff, you know, after Halloween, from like Halloween till, uh, you know, Valentine's Day basically is about the best window here to harvest and dry and cure. It's funny that uh, I'm thinking too is I'm talking about this with you about electrical prices and everything too because I've actually said uh, lately, you know, last month that uh, I may even downsize some grow space for the summer because power rates are, you know, spike here in Michigan during the summer. And it's, you know, between fighting the heat with air, more air conditioning, trying to cool everything down. And then the extra tap on the price of the power in general during the summer months, it might be easier for me or more cost effective to bulk up during, you know, the spring, that springtime and some enough to carry me through the, the summertime months. And then, you know, maybe start up, you know, in a veg type atmosphere in, in August there uh, to save me some money. But hmm. After I hear your your woes there in Cal in Galley there, man, it's like shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> My pro cost problem isn't uh, nearly as bad as uh, what you guys got going on any one day there. So, oh yeah, it's like yeah, it's like uh, right now I think it peaks out at like forty eight or fifty cents a kilowatt hour at night. So it, it's just it just, kills, it just kills you. So you say that's your at night rate. Yeah, they have this stupid thing called uh, what are they what are they freaking hiding it as uh, time of use, which basically means during the day when everybody's at work, you know, or you know, without this COVID crap, when everybody's at work, uh, you pay less for your power. But right when you get home, they're up on that price because they know that you're home now, so you're not using it at work where they're charging your work more during the day. But now that you're home, they're going to charge you more because you're home. It's really stupid. Completely opposite here. It's completely opposite here. Completely opposite. To, it's here in Michigan, the daytime rates are expensive. From seven to seven here in Michigan, that's your most uh, uh, expensive rates. And then anything after that, especially after like 10 to six, they give you an even better rate. Uh, and during nighttime hours, so yeah, we're exactly backwards. We're on completely that. slipped. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it's stupid. It's really stupid. And then you, you can know, actually sign a deal people. with them, saying if you if you uh, agree to run all your majority of your shit at night, they'll give you a better rate. Oh wow! But they'll they'll smack you if you're. If you run shit during the day, though, I mean, it's it's just like you're saying, it's quite the opposite, man. If you take the deal, then yeah, if you run in washers or lights, you know, whatever during the day, then you're paying for it, man. Right. Man. Well, they're trying to do. They're it's getting to the point here where even our water is ridiculous. They're trying to implement a thing now where you can only have so much water per day, per household. Huh. That's always been a Kelly thing too there. Yeah. Guys in the water. That's crazy being so close to the water. All the years that in humanity we haven't mastered a way to clean up that ocean water and make it consumable, it's nuts. Oh, it's 
completely have a uh, desalination st- uh, stuff on boats, you know, so they could do that on a large scale for a reservoir, you know, it'd be really simple. They just don't do it. Damn Kelly. Damn Kelly. Damn Kelly. Damn Kelly. It's going to fall in the ocean someday anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts about the, all that kind of crazy talk, man? Have you been uh, in a big one? What's that? As far as like, have you been in a big one? Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're fun. <laughs> yeah, we've been in some good ones. It's uh, you kind of hear it before it hits. You know, you hear this like it sounds like. Uh, you almost think it's something coming from the military because we have so many military bases out here. You almost think it's coming from one of the military bases. Then all of a sudden, the glasses in this freaking cabinet start clinking together. Your ceiling fan starts swaying. You start feeling the house rocking. It's kind of weird. It's pretty cool, though. Yeah, uh, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's pretty fun. I mean, the big ones where you know buildings and shit fall are not great, but if you're in a place where you're just feeling it, dude, it's a cool little deal. <laughs> oh, man. Jake's fucking giving me shots back. Wish he was about ready to fall into its legs. No, in fact, it's the opposite, Jack. Our legs are drying up. <laughs> well, so are ours. Though. So are ours. <laughs> no, I think if you took California and uh, you started it like, you know, the north edge of San Francisco went all the way into the Sierras and then down and then back out like, you know, LA and cut that whole section off and let it float away. California would be a way better state. (laughs) It'd be a way better place. Want to uh, become its own state a few years back anyway. What was that? You're, you're breaking up again there. I said, is that the half that wanted to become its own state a few years back anyway? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They wanted to split it in three states. Yeah. Take like LA to San Francisco is one, and the Central Valley is another, and then uh, Southern California grouped into its own little thing. That was stupid. <laughs> it was That's stupid. Crazy. Yeah. And my, my question was always well, what state gets to keep all the debt? That you is, know? That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. Who gets screwed over for the money that you owe everybody? But yeah, we're uh, we got a plan. We're getting out of here pretty soon. We got to go east. Uh, any ideas on uh, where you might drop your uh, feet, drop your hat? Um, I got a couple of requirements. I got to be able to, uh, you know, hop on a quick, short little flight, or be able to drive to the ocean to go fish. You know, so kind of kind of stuck in a little realm but uh we're looking at like northern arizona areas same heat right uh same actually kind of it's a little no it's a little more uh a little more told towards the cold side in the winters i mean they get snow where we're looking at and quite a bit of it so um you know, we don't get that here. You know, here we get snow. We can go visit it for the day and come home and leave it where it was at. But where we're looking at, it's going to snow, you know, all winter. So it'll be a change of scenery, change of environment. And I'm sure it's going to change the whole animal of growing. Everything I know is going to go right out the window. It's all going to be different. Just tweak, just tweaking your game, learning new things. That's all. Right. New things, new people, new right. Yeah. I'm trying to keep up with chat here, but it's kind of hard. Normally, I'm all over it. I can like watch the show and listen in, and you know, read through chat. And it's different when you're on the other end. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, way different on the other and it's it can be difficult to keep up yeah 
think, uh, I saw the American one in here earlier. I don't know if he's still here or not. But uh, oh, he's usually close. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was talking to him about uh, maybe him and I doing something with that uh, Mendo Loco and uh, something he's got. So I'm not going to, you know. That'd be a good combination there, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you you remember what him and I were talking about. I'm not going to let everybody know just for respect from him. You know, if, if he doesn't want it out there, that's that's for him to put it out there on his side. But, you know. It's kind of cool because that all came about from the show, from you. So, oh, that's even cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that Mendo Loco is fire. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, to be able to pheno hunt it again and, you know, find that, that male and female and do that uh, F2. It's going to be a fun little project. It's always fun when you're seeing people enjoy the strains you've created, too. Yeah, oh, it's great, you know, knowing that what I thought might be good actually turned out good. It's kind of cool to know that, you know. Puffer was happy with hers. Yeah, yeah. she said she did it, so I'm cool with that. You know, you and her are the only ones that ever got it. So other than uh, my brother. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to do an F2 and get that out to everybody. So what do you do with uh, your trimming stuff? Do you make edibles with that shit, or you just make some bubble? bubble? Yeah, I just do bubbles. I, I can't. I can't eat the edibles, man. They fucking kick me in the balls for like three days. I just can't do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't just, see I, that I, as a bad thing. Well, <laughs> not really. But you know, I don't like to be high for three solid days with the same high. <laughs> we kind of yeah, edible- you say tomato I say tomato <laughs> <laughs> yeah now I take I take all my trim and uh, uh, it all goes in the ice buckets when I do runs of that nothing you know, wrong with that nothing wrong with it, that I most certainly you know, appreciate some good bubble right it, it's always good but, you know, the funny thing is uh, a lot of it is because of my laziness, too, because <laughs> I hate trimming. I mean, who doesn't hate trimming? Trimming just sucks. But I get to the point where I'm so over it, like, you know, half to a quarter of the way through, I'll just strip everything off straight into that uh, ice bucket after that big old nugs, the whole nine yards, just because I don't want to trim it anymore. Oh, man, I, I've still not caught up on the dry trim. <laughs> like never put off. Oh God. I don't think I'll do that again. I don't <laughs> think I'll do that. I'll just put it in the freezer and, and then you know go get some ice water and run it through. I'm actually thinking about doing that because um it the next round's coming up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It might be just a better storage method, I think. Yeah. Right. I love my flower, but I wouldn't mind a, a nice stockpile of some amazing right. bubble. It's not right. such a bad thing. Or ooh, even to turn it into a bubble and then have it pressed out into some Press rosin. It. Yeah, there you God, go. I, I've, it's been a long, long time since I've had a nice stockpile of some rosin. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, you got the next round coming up. Just uh, throw everything into into the buckets and have it pressed. Well, a lot of guys want it washed for or wash it these days, so I could wash it for them and take them to bubble. Yeah, um, I've had uh, guys on the other side of that too. They want to wash if they're going to do it. They want to do the whole process. They don't necessarily want you buttoning in <laughs> yeah. with your uh, wash method. Yeah, true. <laughs> But see, I'm all, you know, I'm all about my personal. That's all. I'm just a personal grower, you know. I grow for me. You know, I'll, I'll give it, you know, like hook my brother up here and there and just, you know, show up at his house. Hey, dude, here you go, you know, enjoy. But that's it, you know. So I just. 
I wish it's been a long time since I've just grown for myself. I do have uh, patience. I am a caregiver. Yeah, so I'm I'm my own caregiver. That's the way I look at it. You know, I know what I like. I know what I need. I know what I know what helps with what. You know, because I used to race off road. You know, motorcycles, and that beats the living shit out of your body. So pretty soon you're like, well, my knees crack every time I walk or my back hurts or whatever. And you know what strains kind of start helping with what? And, you know, you just kind of stick to them, which is nice because, you know, if you're going and buying it somewhere, you don't know what you're getting. Right. Right. Yeah. I I love motorcycle riding too. It's been a while since uh, I've been able to ride on a bike. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, if I'm not fishing, I'm riding. Nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's funny. I'm actually, uh, I'm trying to find one right now. I'm trying to find a new bike right now. And, uh, none of the dealerships around here want to play ball. No. You know? No, everybody wants to stick to their freaking making their thousand dollar commission per salesman type deal. And, you know, I'm not going to pay for that. I don't want to pay all their stupid fees. So, right now, <clears throat> right now, it seemed like it'd be a good time to buy, too. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, interest rate wise, but, you know, these guys know that uh, they haven't worked in a couple months because everything was shut down. So now they're trying to double up on their money. Well, it's the same aspect I would think, too, is nobody could be out really getting one or thinking about one properly. Uh, right. So they're sitting there on the lot. That'd be my whole angle. Give me exactly. a deal, or we'll just watch that thing fucking gather dust on that lot. Right. The new ones should be coming out. You're stuck with last year's models. And that's exactly Talk what I'm doing. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm looking for like last year's model that they couldn't sell last year and still sitting there collecting dust, you know? And they want to try to sell it like it's this year's. I'm not going to play that game with them, though. What's your shirt say there? Oh, shoot. <laughs> What's your shirt? I beat anorexia. <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny shirt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that, that one in the... Uh, I got another one that says... Uh, what is it? Uh, something about, like, nobody needs an AR-15. But nobody needs a whiny little bitch either, yet here you stand. <laughs> I've got so many comments on both of those when I wear them in public. It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like a pretty good sized guy, too. I, I doubt you'd get too many people really challenged. Oh, no, man. that's exactly why I'm wearing this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm pushing 270, man. I'm fat. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, you know? Yeah. I, I enjoy it. It's, I, I, I like that kind of humor myself. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. Beating anorexia, that was the hardest battle I've ever fought in my life, man. <laughs> That's fucking funny. How many people you get that comment on that shirt? Oh, it's like a constant thing. If I go to like, you know, if I go somewhere to a store or something, there's three, four people going to say something. You ever get any congratulations? Oh, all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. All the time. I have another one that uh, <laughs> it says, uh, it's got a deer, right? A little picture of a deer. And it says, uh, dear vegans, my food shits all over your food. I wear that one at the grocery store every time I got to go grocery shopping, man. <laughs> people, some people get pissed. Other people just start laughing. Yeah, that's, that's another good one. Yeah. I'm picking those up at, a, you guys got like a Spencer's over there? Or somebody that's just creative around you? No, I just, uh, like those who really know me know that I got a really fucked up sense of humor. And, uh, you know, I find shit funny that most people find offensive. So birthdays and Christmas and all that, they just find the, like the most outlanded shit. So <laughs> I end up with the most random outlanded shit. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll wear it, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just means that they're thinking of you. 
they, they, they know your taste. They know me. They know me well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So is there anything out there that uh, is really pulling your ear as far as a new strain that you really aren't thinking about? Uh, there really is. There really is. There's one that, uh, that came out a little while back that I really wanted and I slept on. And uh, that was the, uh, the vanilla tart. I, I slept on that vanilla tart and uh, I shouldn't have. I really wanted that one. But uh, uh, I don't know if Badger still has that or not. But that was a good one. That was yeah, good. not it, to rub that in or nothing, but that was a good one. I I think he still has it. Um, but I think he's he's doing like bulk seeds. You know, the way he's getting rid of stuff is bulk, and I don't want bulk. I just want you know I don't have room for bulk. So, you know, I'm cool with just like a ten pack that I can hunt through. You know, I don't need to buy two hundred. But I just did. Uh, I just did get a couple lately that I'm kind of really happy about. I got uh, a pure Afghan and another one called Pakistan Valley. That are they're both 100% uh, indica strains. Cause I really like the indicas, and uh, those just both really looked appealing to me. And Afghan was one of the first uh, really good ones that I ever smoked. So it's kind of been you know true to my heart ever since then so to actually be able to grow that one out from seed is going to be kind of cool yeah i enjoy the afghan strains myself yeah it's good good flavor good buzz for sure right right and i i, I like the the indicas you know i like to to smoke and relax and and you know i i smoke more for like pain than anything because you know like i said i used to race desert stuff and you know, you can only hit the desert floor at 90 miles an hour so many times before it starts to uh, do damage. And then, you know, you come home and you smoke a nice heavy indica and all that pain kind of melts away for a little while and you can function. All right. I'm actually hoping some of these older seeds of uh, one of my original first grows of uh, the OG Kush. I saw that. I saw you posted that up. Yeah. That's one of my top two. I think the uh, if I could grow any other strains than the ones I'm about to, that uh, that OG is one of the next ones. That OG Kush. I hope they crack because I'll tell you what, man. I actually had to stop growing that shit because I couldn't function. <laughs> I was oh, yeah. mono cropping at the mono cropping at the time, and it was just like whole runs of that OG Kush. And I was just like crippled for like three, four months at a time, man. I was always trying to trade off just to get some shit that I would keep me awake, man. That fucking OG Kush, man. You come home from work and smoke one of those and it just like, pow, man. Fucking be out of the couch. Exactly. I could, couldn't get nothing done with that shit. So I'm kind of bravely trying to bring it back just because... It should be around, if not here for somebody. But man, that shit's fire, man. Hopefully, yeah. it seeds crack. Yeah, that's definitely gonna lock you to the couch for a while. You're not getting that, nothing done today. <laughs> it was funny too. That was it, like one of the original reasons why I started pheno hunting, popping different strains. Right there was because I just couldn't. <laughs> I needed something else, man. I was like, oh my god, this is killing me. What's up, Woody East Coast? How you doing, man? Yeah, oh, monocrop, man. man. If you get a you, you monocrop something that you like, you end up doing it again and then you get sick of it. Or then you screw up and do it with something you don't like. <laughs> you know, then you're stuck with it. Like I said, that was like one of my first uh growth was there so it was monocropped you know it wasn't until much much later really until i started testing for sub on a regular basis that i really became keen to uh running multiples of strains of everything you know one yeah. point i think i peaked out at you know 35 strains floating around at once 
a motherfucker to judge juggle yeah. those bitches around. Thirty five. I thought I was good having like seven or eight going. <laughs> Cup moms, cup moms, that's what I call them. Is that how you do that? Just bring a few a fourth at a time and just keep little cuts, keep them going, keep them fuck, keep them around. Yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing with, uh, you know, the mother plants that I have is I just keep them around and, you know, once in a while throw them in the rotation. Reading chat there. I need Jay on the grow to uh, make it happen. Uh, anybody that wants to come talk to me, man, I'd be honored to have them on. That's for sure. I'm still fucking stoked, man. I'm half tempted. Uh, I wish somebody 42420, you watch the show. You're the one that brought it up. Whereabouts in the show? Not that I'm don't want to watch the whole show, but I'm fucking, I want to cut to the chase and see where I got the shout out, man. I'm fucking stoked about that shit. That's pretty cool to get a shout out on the grow tube there. Especially when I tried to reach out to him last week about uh, the sub episode there. I was, uh, I don't know how to say this. I was putting it out there you know, I was putting my two cents in, but in a way, I was actually kind of hoping that uh, he was going to call me on for that episode. One of them things, <laughs> but uh, did not did not work out that way. Oh, so I think I'm going to do a dab. Are you you just a flower smoker? You want to take a bong rip with me over there, SoCal? Let's freaking take a bong rip. I was just kind of scrolling through chat. It's hard to keep up when you're uh, when you're on this side of it. Oh, you should be on this side. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. I'm down to the last little tiny dregs of that cuvee. Yeah, I'm jealous. I would actually hopefully keep that. You're the only one that has cut of that anymore. I have. I don't even have. I have cuvee seeds, but I don't have that cut going right now. Oh, brother! If you need it back, let me know. If you want that in your garden, I can. I can. Uh, I can send that to you anytime you need it. Nice. It's good to know. That's one of the ones that we need to keep around too, because uh, uh, yeah, you know why. <laughs> It just needs to stay around. That's a good cut. Kuwait needs to definitely stay around. Oh, damn. So you do you do or you don't have uh, nine pound. That's funny. Um, I'm hoping the cuts that I have survive. I got one in flower that uh, right now, worst case scenario, I'm going to reveg it. But uh, at one I point, I was talking to Jack Greenstock about maybe getting him a cut or trying to get him a cut from one of the sources. And yeah. uh, it mentioned you, and he was like, Boy, it sure would be easier just to get it from him. <laughs> if he's in California, it seems like it'd be easier to get it from a Cali guy than it would be to ship it. Yeah, I think uh, he's, he's fairly close to me. Um, so yeah, if uh, if I can get me these... want to take you up on that cuvee though, anytime, brother, anytime. Yeah, I can uh, I can get some started for you tomorrow. Jack may want a cut of that if he's close. I've had a few people ask me for cuts of that, and uh, that that thing. I I'm not giving that to anybody. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Now, however, though, uh, I will give cuts to those guys because, uh, you know, that's your cut. So, you know, with with your permission, I would give it to those guys, but nobody else. Nobody else. Appreciate that that respect so, there. Yeah, Jax. Uh, if you if you want a cut of that, let's uh, let's get together somehow. You know, DM me. Uh, give Eagle, you know, contact if or whatever, you know, somehow you, you'll find me. 
uh, let me know and, and we'll figure out what we can do to get that to you. Awesome. Yeah, I, I really have really put too much thought into how much gear I have spread around until I started doing this show and started like lining people up and, you know, hearing oh i got seeds afro i got seeds i got seeds i got seeds i've got gear from him i've got gear i've got cuts i was like i've really passed some stuff out i didn't realize that you know gave it away and you know whatever but that's what it's all about though i love you know i just didn't necessarily put two and two together you know it's just something that comes you know naturally i did never Put people together and hear the stories. You know what I'm saying? It right. was kind of weird well, to hear. You know, like, well, look at look at how that uh, me having that coup cut came around. You know, that was kind of cool too. Is uh, when when Sub was talking about coup on his Instagrams, I would always pop up with, "Damn, I missed that coup You know, or something to that effect. And all of a sudden, here one day, here's Eagle, dude. I'm gonna have to get you a cut of that. Just random out of the blue, you know, and it, he made it happen, and, and that was awesome, dude. That was fucking awesome. So, thank you for that. Appreciate that. I miss hanging out in them chats. I miss right. hanging out in them chats. Yeah, the, the YouTube, the Instagram, they're all kind of not the same without them, you know. Yeah, and I always like to rub that in on Fumador, too, because he is, uh, as Resurrection Prophets point out, he's always smoking on his coupe. But he's got the whinier version. He don't have nothing with no hints of the chocolate in there. So I always like to poke him and tell him that. <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely a little bit of that chocolate in there. Just And it's what I like about it is it's not really overpowering. But it's just there enough to let you know it's there. Yeah, I uh, I have another version of, or actually seeds of it was uh, it's a Kube cross from uh, Coma Creations. It's Coma, and uh, I forget what it's. I want to believe it's. Uh, I can't. I can't. Even, I'd have to look at my books. But man, that talk about a good recreation that. That uh, Sam Sarah is the name of the recreation there. It was fucking amazing. But it wasn't like a recreation of Cuvée. It was just a... Uh, just a cross. Uh, bread, a cross of it, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. And it was actually sent to Sub. That's how I got it for, like, he sent, sent it to Sub as a tester. And Sub passed him around to a few of us. And uh, I was... I gave it all thumbs up. I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, this needs good. to go out. Yeah, I don't. That, that well, is I'm not sure whatever happened to Coma. Create well, it's Coma Creations, not just Coma, but uh, he's kind of went off the radar for a little while. Well, a few of them really have though, too. You know. Sad when you hear good breeders like that kind of checking out for a minute. Right, right, or something stupid happening, or you know, and, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, certain people get that title of breeder, and others get just, oh, you're just a pollen chucker. Well, everybody that's considered a breeder started out chucking pollen. You know, that's where it all came from. Kombacha time. I actually made it out to the store today, so I grabbed me some kombacha. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, to come out. It's an acquired taste, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of what they say. Things, if you quit drinking it, your body, like, fucking craves it. I've never drank it. Never drank it. You know, I got hooked on. Good for uh, your gut. I got stuck on the monster drinks for a long time. That shit will kill you, man. I just gave them up. Yeah, man. I was like, when I was racing full time, I was drinking like six to ten of those a day. That shit kill you, man. Oh yeah, 
it's it's it was yeah. giving me i i believe that's what i've traced my anxiety back to was uh abuse of that shit yeah <sighs> and red setter farms was the one that kind of took me that way because he he suffers from it and he said he was drinking them just like you and that's uh he kind of led him to a permanent anxiety from that shit and I had never, ever fucking, I had, I'm one of the old school guys that I don't fucking, oh, that anxiety is for pussies. Those kids weren't raised right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. man, I, I had never seen it so hard as in late life. And I, when it hit me, it hit me hard, man. I didn't, I don't know how that come. I trace it all back to them fucking energy drinks. And I noticed that alleviating once I got rid of that shit too, man. So hopefully you've oh, done yeah. kick them <laughs> yourself, man. Yeah, after a while they just you get all like tweaker with them, you know? You get all sketchy and weird and they they just really screw with you after a while. <laughs> well the eye opener for me was uh this was February of this year. A short month. Uh, I went to, I got stuck taking the cans back because I tried to pass them off to the kids. And, uh, you know, you could have the money or whatever, but they, nobody would take them back. So I got stuck taking them back. Let's get them the hell out of there. And the machines kept spitting back the energy drink cans. And I'm thinking, I look at them, they're 10 cents. Well, they're taking these bitches back. So I'm throwing them in the car, you know, over my shoulder. And so I walk them up to the service counter and say, hey, you guys, you know, whatever. They take them back, but they're like, yeah, but you have to count them out. Okay, oh. cool. Whatever. 50 fucking cans. 50 oh. fucking cans for the month of February. And I look back at that cart that was just nothing but en empty energy drink cans, and I was like, my gut hurt. I was like, oh, 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 oh. Something's got to change here, man. This can't be good. And then I heard yeah. Red's story, and that was it, man. I was like, dude, I'm done. I'm done with this. Things will do long term, you know. They're they're bad. I was hooked on that stuff for a long time. Were you the same as I was? You'd be good for like three days, and then it'd be like a crash where you fucking were done for a whole day, just slept, and then it was back into oh, yeah. the energy drinks. Yeah. Yeah. It just knocks you out after a few days, and you got to sit down and sleep for like, you know, a good solid 12 hours, and then drink another one when you wake up, and you're good to go again. Poison. Poison. That's like saying, you know, the vitamin and what's in there and shit, but they're not telling you where those vitamins are derived from, which aren't good sources. No, no, they're making it sound like it's all good for you and it's all bad. Yeah, like everything else, I had to learn the hard way there. Yep. Yeah, I got to the point now where, like, when I drink them, I get heartburn. Which is great because now it makes me not want to drink them. Yeah, better off anyway. Yeah. Is that, is that how you beat anorexia? Is fucking give up the energy drinks? I quit racing and started, uh, got rid of the energy drinks and found, you know, McDonald's in the taco shops. <laughs> uh. That's fucking funny. I just had to double back to that shirt. I was reading it there. <laughs> Gave up the energy drinks and the energy was gone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you know, like uh, Coors Light, man, they're, they're lying to you. There ain't nothing light about that one either. Yeah, that's yeah. I did, that was never one of my favorite beers anyway. Back, I haven't drank in 20 some years anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'm, it wasn't I'm one of my favorites back then. No, no. I'm not a big drinker, really. You know, like I'll buy a six pack and it'll stay in my fridge for like five months. I use it to cook more than anything now. But when I do drink a beer, I'm a, I'm a beer snob. 
Well, I love some uh, beer can chicken. It's good to cook with, like I said. I'm afraid to get it in my system a little bit. But, uh, and it just didn't have no place for me anymore. I started early. <clears throat> By the time I had to hit 21, I, had, like, I was done. You know what I mean? I was already over it by like 21 and shit. Dude, it, it was funny because uh, when I hit 21, it was like, well, now we can actually legally go to the bars. There's no point. You know, it's kind of boring at this point because we'd already been hitting the bars for a couple of years here. You know, by 21, it's like, well, the nostalgia's over and uh, let's get on with it. Yeah, same here. I was one of the few seniors that was telling bar stories, you know, in homeroom and shit. <laughs> All hungover, sleeping at my desk, telling bar stories. Yep, yep. <laughs> days. Those are the fun times. They were fun times, too. Yeah. Right. I remember going into the, uh, the liquor store that we'd been buying beer from for like three, four years. And uh, went in like three days after my 21st birthday and showed the dude my ID. <laughs> he was so mad, so pissed off. <laughs> Man, I know I've said it many a times tonight, but I'm one of the people that uh, really believe that uh, one of the key things to keeping prosperity your way is, you know, uh, Voicing gratitude, and I can't say enough how grateful I am that uh, this was able to happen tonight, man. I was able to hang out with you. The internet gods were making, as soon as I said that, my internet says, internet connection unstable. <laughs> but I am still grateful for that unstable connection and being able to fucking hang out tonight, man. This is does it feels nice to be back on somewhat track a little bit yeah i'm swung uh, through chat here and it's kind of it's kind of good to be able to like see chat again too you know uh, like all these same people are here and it's kind of like everybody just becomes one big evening smoke session party with friends you know it's awesome it is too it is too and i, I am so much appreciation for him because I like the, uh, even the nights where the show's kind of taken like in the after session it might go down a rabbit hole or whatever you know they don't check out man most people would be like eh hey, fuck this I'm out of here they're talking some goofy goofy shit but they hang out man keep smoking just start their own little fucking chat and shit it's pretty cool when, when never God, once have I looked rabbit hole yeah, never once have I looked at chat and seen that it's like in its own direction been like, you know, uh, right. that's bullshit, man. That's bullshit. You know? but, yeah, it's, it's always good times. Yeah, man, I can't wait to have some uh, some of those F2s done so we can give them away to these people on your show. I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, any other uh, tips you want to shout out for uh, in the gardens there? That uh, flower beds there? Any knowledge you like to pass on? Keep it simple. Just keep it simple, man. Keep Figure out what works for you and your environment and your space and, and master it. You know, keep it to you and simple. Don't overcomplicate it. You know, that's where I started out wrong when I went indoors was I always thought everybody at the grow shops knew more than I did and, you know, knew everything that this product was going to do that, you know, that product would pick up and do something different and you mix the two together and you get all these results and everything's sunshine and rainbows, but it's really not, you know, it's got to stick to what you know and master that. If you find something that works, keep doing it. If you find something you, you think maybe kind of might be working, then it's really not, you know, get rid of it. If you see a major difference, bring it back, but just stick to what you know and master your craft. Yeah, that's excellent advice right there. Excellent advice. So many people are so uh, quick to 
want to have that massive harvest and all these just huge dead but dense buds they're willing to just throw whatever at it you know what i'm saying and uh, it's sad. Yeah. like you said you need to like concentrate on the basics and bring things in one at a time to see how uh useful or you know what plus or minus is it had on adding to your garden instead of just bringing it in bringing it in bringing it in uh great advice just keep it simple and yeah, you know, just that's... whether you're doing hydro, soil, cocoa, you know, freaking whatever you're growing and, you know, your medium and just stick to what's working. Don't try to get crafty and invent the wheel again, you know. And then like all these people, like you said, you know, they want big, huge buds that are nice and tight. And I'll take some nice, nice nugs over big, huge spears that don't come out as good as the littler ones. Uh, most often than not, you're just going to chop them bugs down into smaller nugs anyway. Right. You know, you're going to chop them all up and put them in a jar and, you know, it's all the same, but if you can get that little better quality and taste and, you know, the onset of it and everything in a smaller little nug, why not? You know, I mean, especially for me, cause I'm just growing for me, you know, so I want quality over quantity. So I don't care if I just get a bunch of little, you know, nice nugs. So any shout outs, you, anybody you want to give some shout outs to since, uh, you know, got the time to do it? Everybody to do it chat. It's, I don't know how you do it, like, person by person by person by person every day man it's that's hard to keep up with but yeah everybody in uh, chat and uh you know like i said jack Street socks get a hold of me we'll talk about that we'll figure out how to make that happen for you any uh you know people that's helped you out along the way or you know maybe some sources of uh knowledge that uh, you can put out there if anybody's looking for some you know tips that's helped you uh yeah <laughs> actually mendo dope they i've learned so much from them and sub that it's just unbelievable if you guys haven't watched the weed nerd episodes go through youtube and find them and watch them all it's worth the time it's worth the knowledge that's where I got, you know, most of my knowledge from was Sub and the Mendo guys, you know, and then like my older brothers, you know, cause they back in their days grew and they gave me some pointers and tips and, you know, oh, put kelp on it and, you know, put fish juice on it and shit like that. And, you know, they're old school styles. And, but when I really started listening to Sub and getting into Mendo dope was when I really started learning a lot. So I'd highly recommend that to anybody out there, you know, check both of them out. Miss that man. It, it, sub is like an inspiration to a lot of people. That guy gave a lot of knowledge just because he had it and it was the right thing for him to do to pass it on to you. Yeah. He was another one of us that was super passionate about the plan and, you know, just, he was very true to uh, about the, the seed thing, I think he palmed seeds to just about everybody he met as well. And what a great way to uh, meet and be remembered by somebody is that palming of the seeds there, the gift of it. I always say it's, it always reminds me of that uh, vacation scene where Clark gets the, the jelly subscription. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Clark gets <laughs> a gift that keeps on giving. And the pack of seeds is, man. That's the key. That's the gift that keep keep you for the rest of your life if you know exactly. what the fuck you're doing, man. Uh, yeah, I got a pack of uh, the Jazz Queen that he was throwing off the stage at the when he got his award, and I still refused. You know, he handed me those when I was getting the other seeds from him. He was like, "Here, enjoy." You know, and uh, I still now that he's gone, man, it's like I don't want to crack those. I just want to see. I got to disagree with you, brother. Me and Swedish Peach I had this conversation in a chat one night too. And, uh, you know, you can keep that cover 
that cover ain't going nowhere. You can put that in that drawer right where it is right now. But moreover, those genetics now, he would want you to pop that pack. And even better, to keep them, you know, they could go bad. They it could get lost in time, brother, sitting in that box to yes. where you crack them things. You get to enjoy them. You can pass them on to somebody. You can you know, help that plant keep a life forever and ever and ever. Keep that cover. Keep the cover. Pop that thing. You fucking get them girls going. You know, keep some for yourself and then flood everybody you know with a jazz queen cut. And, you know, that's just yeah. one of them ones there that you don't have to keep to your cuff, man. Just flood everybody you know. You want a cut? Got one. You know what I mean? Space queen, got or you know, jazz queen, got one, you know, and keep it alive. That way, every more and more people have the opportunity to uh, have some of them genetics in their garden. Because as we know now, uh, there ain't going to be no new stuff, so we yeah. might as well try to keep as much of it in our gardens as we can. And that ain't going to happen with everybody sitting on them packs as mementos. You know what I'm saying? Those fucking yeah, mementos. Right on that. Fucking you're absolutely screwed. right on that. Yeah, pop yeah. them things, man. Keep the cover, pop them seeds. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pop those. I think he got me talking to it. I would. I yeah, would. he'd want you to, for sure. Yeah, you're right. He would. He would. And it's the right thing to do to honor him, you know. So, I, that man gave me a lot of knowledge. So everything that you know, everything that I thought I knew, I didn't, and everything that I learned from him that I've implemented, you know, him and Mendo. It's all worked. So that might not be, even be a bad cross right there. I mean, you talk about pr- upcoming projects. Uh, you could breed the cuvee with uh, the, the space queen or the jazz queen there, and uh, you know, sub what? on sub, whole new creation right there. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, I am using one of his males to go with uh, the Mendo Loco too. So. Nice. I'm not gonna say which one to everybody you know, just because it, you know, it it's either gonna be fire or it's gonna be dog shit. And if it's dog shit, then you know, it's not going. That's anywhere. one. Of the, you know, we we talk about that a lot too. That's one of the the risks. You know, <coughs> people talk about <coughs> packs of seeds, prices of the packs of seeds and shit like that, but they don't know. You know. What you just said right there is a 50-50 shot for any breeder. Anybody. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can put two together. It could sound amazing to you. It can sound, but you've got a lot of your, you know, at least six, eight months of your life up into them seeds. You know what I mean? Space oh, yeah. in your garden, you know, just thought process, all that. And then you've got them, you got to put them out there and hope so it takes and in a lot of t- at times, you know, it's off to testers and there that, you know, are risking their garden space on something that, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of work into breeding. So when you buy them packs, you got to understand, you know, it isn't just <laughs> hopefully just crossed and thrown out there. You know, there's a lot of time and dedication that's went into breeding out a good line. It takes a long time and a lot of patience and a lot of error and, and failure, too. Yeah. So, I'll tell you what, man. When I sent those seeds to you, I was nervous as hell. I was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> I might have just sent Eagle some dog shit." <laughs> oh no, no, every, every shit was fire too, man. That's another thing too I can speak about uh, as far as you know the breeding, breeding in general, man. I uh, I popped I, I popped some beans this uh, last round. I think I've got. 10 new strains floating around. <laughs> oh, nice. But as I'm like dropping some beans and shit that uh, I'm looking them over and some stood out more than others. And uh, man, but you could tell like some, some of them were just beautiful. Like I'm almost, I'm looking at them like I'm looking at gems and shit. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh God. Oh. You know, look at the color of that fucking thing. Stripes, you know. It's, they were, too, man. As far as beans go, they were fucking beauties. I, I knew I was. That's one of the things, too, I could tell by just holding them in my hand, the color. i like, these are going to be fire. There's something transferred over there. I knew these are going to be fucking fire, hands down. 
I can't no. wait. <laughs> That's kind of how I'm hoping these uh, these next round of seeds I have is going to look, you know. You just know from the get-go that it's going to be just that one that you're looking for. And that's the thing I like about popping beans, too, is you might find that next fucking cut everybody's got to have. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, that's, uh, uh, you know who else I want to shout out to? I'm not here, but uh, Amelia Lavender came up with that Joshua tree. And we, that shit is. What is it? We, what is it? Is it we? War, we know the garden and something we her name there. Uh their gardening name. Wizards of Weeden, that's it. Wizards of Weeden, that's uh Amelia's gardening uh genetic handle there. Oh, okay, okay. I did, yeah, I, I thought she'd kind of dropped off the radar for a while. But that Joshua tree She's... crop. That thing is great, man. Have you She's popped her head back up as of late? Uh, not not like she was in a lot of the chats though, but she has been posting a little bit. You know, good to see her back up and around. Though it's weird when like one of us falls off like that though. Like you're saying, it's like uh, what happened to you know such and such? They were there all the time. Now they're gone. Then all of a sudden they're gone. Yeah, yeah. But that uh, yeah, that Joshua tree. I got the uh, the juicy fruit, you know. It tastes tastes and smells just like uh, juicy fruit gum, and it's it grows. A good you, uh, flavor there. Yeah, it's very unique. And then uh, another one I ended up finding was, uh, and I I don't know why I didn't keep it, but I got rid of it for some stupid reason. Was the uh, like Hawaiian punch type, you know, of that. Uh, cherry lemonade and that was only around yeah. for a minute yeah yeah that was only around for a quick minute it went very fast too yeah and you know in fact i think uh when i when i uh got those mendo locos over to puffer smiles i gave her a pack of the uh cherry lemonade that i had left over and I guess she found a pretty good one too. Nice, yeah. That's uh, that's one there too. It kind of makes that one slip through my fingers. I don't have that one. I it was some of them ones there towards the end that you know you kind of take. I took for granted that, uh, and and I get, it's one of the things that we're all guilty of, you know, take life for granted. There's it, always a tomorrow. It's always going to be another day. You know what right. I mean? I can do that later. And, uh, and that was the case on some of them strange. Oh, I could, I'll sell these. You know what I mean? Because a lot yeah. of them, when I got them, I put, I put some up. You know what I mean? I was smart enough to put a pack up or whatever. But in them instances there, I think all I got out of that round, I still got some mango haze. But I didn't get the, I don't think I've got cherry lemonade because it was one of them things, you know, oh, I'll be able to get more than that. Sells my money. I got, you know, but it was fucking hell and fuck, man. That oh, shit's it's gone. gone. It's gone. Yeah. I think, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think uh, Badger might have kept that one going. I hope so. He, he says he'll be on the show sometime soon. He hasn't committed to a date, but he, he has promised me he will come on the show. Have you uh, have you got a hold of uh, Mendo Dope? See if they come on. You know, this is a true story. I had Mendo Dope on the hook for the Michigan Bros Grow Show, and then that's kind of what spawned this. <laughs> Uh, somehow or another, it all got lost, and then uh, I kind of ho- coached them to coming over here, and then uh, you know I, I was that was like first or second show busting off from them, you know what I mean? So it was a harder approach to go. <laughs> yeah, I just started my show, you know. You want to come hang out on like episode two? <laughs> <laughs> 
And uh, so I think that slowed things down. I haven't reached out to him in a while, but uh, I should. I should. Yeah, you should. You should. Tell him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tell him I'll hook that uh, that record deal up with him. <laughs> they. <laughs> well, no, they uh, they mentioned a while back that uh, on one of their posts that they wanted to work with Slightly Stupid. Yeah. And uh, it just so happens that Slightly Stupid has their little studio next door to my office. Oh, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of, you know, I've been trying to uh, put those two together. And apparently they've been playing phone tag. But uh, I'd like to think if something happens, you know, and they do a, a stupid dope tour or something that I at least get a shout out. I like slightly stupid. Yeah, I want to get so high. <laughs> that's fucking, that's some good shit. Some good yeah. gardening music right there. It really is. It really is. Yeah, so I've been trying to get those, you know, those guys in touch, but with all this lockdown bullshit and all that, you know, it's been kind of, kind of ridiculous. So we'll see if something ever comes out of that. I'd like to think well, of it done. Make, it was my fault. Make that happen. You can send them in. Send them this way for sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey guys, you look. I'll make this happen, but you have to do Eagle Show first. <laughs> nice. That happened with Danko, though. Did you see that? I mean, I, that actually happened, and I couldn't help but bring it up a little bit on last night's show or yesterday's show, right? Uh, you know what? Uh, I was at work and I couldn't. Uh, I missed the Danko show. I got to go back and watch that. I think that's going to wake up in the morning because uh, I really wanted to see what Danny had to say. That that's was another, a great one. That was a really good one. If you, if I could suggest a, one of many to go back, that's definitely that was definitely a good one. Yeah, yeah, he's but, got a lot of knowledge that I'd like to hear about too. But he was a, he was like another he was a like kind of a Mendo doper to be honest with you in oh, the really? aspect yeah he was like in the aspect where I reached out to him in the beginning and he was like oh yeah 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 I'll come on brother I got gotcha. you and then it was a hard time uh, I learned a little bit too about like shouting out gas before I've got him concreted in because of that you know I said. I said to him, hey, you want to come on? And then I announced that he was going to come on way back when. And then we had some ups and downs and couldn't get it lined up. And at one point, it didn't even look like it was going to happen. And then uh, he posted something on, on his page. And I had posted on his post. I was like, uh, I give up, brother. It's hard for me to say, but I give up. And then... Uh, <laughs> Naughty Nikki, amongst others, uh, started hitting him up on that post. You really need to come on Eagle Show. You need to come on fucking talking shit. And they just went right, bang, 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 bang. And I was like, oh no! It, 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 that post ended up with just tell him to <laughs> time and date. I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I I got a bad vibe from it, so I kind of laid off for a little while. And then I reapproached him again. Oh, he still want to do this or what? And uh, he made good. And uh, it was it was really nice to see that he came on. He had a genuinely good time and offered to come back another day. So that was pretty cool. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm going to have to go back and watch that one. I got tons of respect for the people that, uh, you know, are somewhat uh, weed famous in the community and aren't afraid to, uh, you know, hang out and talk to people. It's pretty awesome. Right. Well, and it's a community that everybody just likes to share their knowledge, which is great. You know, and that's what I like about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the whole thing around the plant, the community, everything is awesome. It's amazing. Right. It isn't even awesome. It's amazing. It, you know, everything from, like, you know, popping that seed all the way to the harvest is a whole different uh, different experience than it is after harvest. 
you know, and it's just all the combinations of it. It's just awesome. Fixing to roll another one up. 420, 420 says Eagle and SoCal. I'm loving this shit. <laughs> Hey, we're just talking shit, right? That's the whole point. Uh, I am just so, again, I know it sounds stupid, but I'm just so thankful it worked out because you just don't know. This fucking stupid internet kind of tagged along all fucking day long. All fucking day long. Even as I told you, you know, so far, so good. And then at 1030, the lights on the modem started fucking just flashing and going nuts. I'm like, really? Because I'm telling you, up in 11, 20, 25, I did not fucking think this shit was going to happen. I went through and unplugged all, anything that would be connected to that modem. I'm like, unplug this, unplug that, unplug this, unplug that, unplug this. I'm going to hook these phones up. I'm going to say a quick fucking prayer. And then I hit my fucking uh, the Zoom. And then I brought up the live box because that's been my telltale right there. When things go wrong, if they, when I click that button to bring up like the live YouTube aspect of it, if that don't come up right, it ain't working. <laughs> so I brought that one up first and it came up just like it was supposed to. Be. Fuck yeah, I got to get these numbers out right now. Get this meeting goes going before it goes south. So yeah, for a minute there. Well, after I talked to you earlier and, uh, you know, confirmed everything this morning with you, I could tell it was going to be a long, stressful day, man. <laughs> oh, it was, too. I actually, my sleeping pattern is super fucked up from not being able to do this. I haven't been able to sleep, and then today, I was up all night. This ain't no fucking, no word of a lie. Uh, well, fuck, it's my show. I can talk about whatever I want, right? <laughs> First thing I got to do is just mark this thing 18 and over, right? So last night, this is exactly how last night went. Anybody who wants to listen is actually how last night went. I fucking fucked around and tried to get the show going from probably about 10 o'clock until 1.30, where I got off the representative with Frontier. That was trying, trying. Every time I'd see the internet box fucking light up i was running over here click 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 trying to get it to fucking go live and it wouldn't go and i was quite frustrated at one point and i got off the phone with that guy i thought to myself i need to calm down i need to uh so i'm gonna fucking take some shrooms <laughs> so i took some shrooms at like 1 30 this morning and fucking rode them out for a little while. And then just as I started to fall out, I, uh, I'm like, oh, God damn it, you asshole. One of the reasons why you wanted to stay up is to call the fucking internet people. So I started calling, and this is at like 7.30. So I fucking start calling uh, some fr fucking numbers, and they've got me on hold. And I actually set my cell phone on speaker in my lap and I sit back in this fucking chair and I fucking zonk right out. <laughs> I wake up at like quarter after eight. I'm still looking on hold and shit <laughs> with one of the companies and shit. So I said, ah, fuck this. So I fucking hung up on them and I passed out in the chair for another fucking couple hours and then up and uh, started hammering away on fucking calling people on trying to get some fucking internet over here. I actually got uh, made a deal with uh, Hodges, and I thought something gave me a bad feeling. Well, what? Why when the lady says, "Let me run your card, and then I'll go over the disclosures," I was like, "Wait a oh, minute! Oh, wait a minute! I gotta <laughs> Should you, you be going over the disclosures <laughs> first before you fucking run my card?" Right. And uh, so she did, and it still kind of left me with like a bad feeling. So I knew there's like down the road there, somebody had nailed them fucking sign to a tree uh, high speed internet is here so I fucking jumped in my truck and fucking ran down there and fucking <laughs> wrote down that number and called them they talked right. me out of Hodges or Hughes 
I fucking ended up having to call them and cancel that order. And fucking, uh, it was another couple hours of back and forth with that company before I settled that deal. But it was all good. Yes, I did say shrooms. <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of scrolling through chat. I'll throw a shout out real quick to uh, 619 nerds in the chat. That's my boy right there. I've been through a lot of shit with him. He, uh, speaking of shrooms, that was the last time I ever did shrooms with him. <laughs> yeah. I believe that's a, that should be like a once a year minimum. You should do that like once a year. Just kind of bring yourself back to center. Right. We used to go out to the deserts out here and shroom out. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh, man. It'd it's, be fun. There's some uh, there's some weird shit that happens in the desert on shrooms, man. <laughs> Plants start to talk to you and cactuses are walking with you. and Yeah. It, it's a weird experience out there. It's fun, though. It, or is that a time ride? I, mean, I don't know if I'd want to be out in the desert right now. How's that? Desert pretty crazy out there at nighttime. It's good. It's good as fuck out there. Oh, it's, it's freaking awesome. It's awesome. It's, uh, if I was going to ever eat shrooms again, that's where I would be. It's so cool out there. There's just nothing around and everything comes to life. Sounds like a good time. Sounds like a good time. Maple Street, yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> Maple Street was the last time, Homer. That was old school. God, that was, uh, shit, 25 years ago. Last time I ate shrimp. Oh, God, you're over. <laughs> 619. Help him out. Help him out, man. <laughs> be even if you could fucking snag that shit, you know, just you two in a bowl, fuck hell yeah, right? It'd be a good day out <laughs> on the water. No, we used to go down to the desert, and there was like this little shithole uh, restaurant bar thing down there. It was a total dump, but we'd go in there and order up some food real quick and eat some shrooms with dinner, and then go drive out to our spot. That was a cool little thing. Spot. It was funny to hear uh, Danny's take on that. Because I've heard that uh, I was trying to get, trying to lead him up to it, but he wouldn't. I don't know if he wanted to lay that out there. But I've heard. You heard like uh, him. Oh, you didn't hear him. You, you had, no, I got to go back and watch that one. How does it work? He was kind of talking about uh, when he met that Jack Herrera that uh, Jack at one point on the plane was trying to um, coerce him into mushrooms. It may have even tricked him into taking some mushrooms. And I've heard that the reason I brought that up with him is because later on I asked him about mushrooms because of the reference from Jack. And because uh, that's what I've heard about Danny. Is fucking if you're not careful around Danny that you may uh, accidentally ingest some. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that is fucking funny. So I tried to get him to maybe say if that's maybe where he got that kind of play from. But uh, he kind of took it in a different direction. He buried it. I love the way that he buried it too. As soon as I said mycelium, he took it, uh, he knew what I was talking about, I could tell, but he kind of took it to like a, a microbe level, you know what I mean? He instantly took it to like the soil and microbes and then popped up talking about mushrooms and then went back into the dirt and shit talking about microbes and shit. I'm like, you're a sly dog there. I like how you didn't directly address the the mushroom question but you uh right. you brought it back up as fungus and shit later on in the conversation <laughs> and how how useful it could be for psycho psychiatric benefits and shit like that <laughs> but yeah he took it right from there back to the dirt and then popped it back out as a mushroom it was pre it was pretty cool i enjoyed the, the story i really did yeah i'm gonna have to go back and watch that one in the morning 
You know, to be honest with me, uh, be honest with you, it was a little bit more passion about the plant than I had uh, initially thought. You know, I, you knew, we all knew he was like the editor of High Times and all that. <laughs> but I never really realized, you know, he had like a hustler in him from back in the day. He was, but he's much like ourselves. You know, it was really cool to see that side. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to go back and watch that. That, that looks like a good one. Yeah, he actually had told us that camp, like part of his days, like hustling some bud and stuff like that before he you know, made it to high time. Oh, nice. Like that. Yeah, it was. It was an excellent interview. I enjoyed it. I really did. Not that I've had a bad one yet. I've enjoyed every one of them. Hey, so we from the other side, you know, you went in chat. I don't it's know. I was, to, to I was kind of I was following Danny Danko, though. <laughs> That's a tough act to follow right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the great thing about the show, though, is that it brings everybody on to like an even playing field. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, everybody's. Uh, everybody's here for the same reason, you know, with the same goals and the same intent. So I, uh, I have much respect for Danny Danko, but I don't, you know, you're just as special in my book as, you know, he is or Miss Nugs or these Nugs and the rest of them are, you know, right. I, that's one thing that about money that has always perturbed me. Uh, People with money, it's not all people, but some people with a whole lot of money can act like they're better than you and shit. But when it comes down to it, you strip you of that money and what makes you better than me now? Not, right. You know yeah. what I mean? We're all, just because you've been blessed to be maybe take another road than I have doesn't give you any any room to stand there and act better than us. So it's, you know, it's nice that you know, would believe. Pardon me? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That kind of attitude is is out here more than you would even believe, man. It's everybody's better than everybody else, and you know, unless you're driving a hundred thousand dollar car, you ain't shit. You know, it ain't like that in reality. Those are the people it that, ain't. that if you if what you have and you know what you drive has to dictate who you are, that ain't cool. That ain't you know that ain't worth it. Have all that money, I don't care. I've met a lot of people all across all walks of life <clears throat> from, and I still deal with a lot of people that are well to do, you know, but some of the best people I've met and I've had, I've met some great people that have money. Don't get me wrong. And, uh, but some of the best people I've met too have had zero fucking dollars, lived in a fucking shack and were some of the fucking most amazing people that I've ever fucking met. And, right. Uh, man, I don't yeah. believe a dollar sign has anything to do with that. No, no, no. It all comes down to who you are, you know. If you need that money to make you who you are, then you're not right in the first place. Right. Yeah. Right. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird like that out here, man. Like, everybody's better than everybody else, you know. But when it comes right down to it, like, they're actually the asshole in the group. This has been a great day. I'm fucking still just smoking this joint, just fucking cheesing. <laughs> just cheesing over here. Nice. I'm uh, trying to figure out what the hell my dog's doing. It got too quiet, you know what I mean? <laughs> Something ain't right. Yeah. Mike snuck in here and just fucking hang out up there, sleeping next to my, my door. Little bubble. That dog right there, fucking. He took me, picked me, Bubba did. And he has never left my side since. All right. <laughs> Fucker, when he hears my alarm go off, because he's not allowed in my bedroom, he hears my alarm go off. He'll wait at my bedroom door and just cry. 
He's worse than my alarm clock. I can hit snooze on my alarm clock, but that boy right there will cry at that door until I get up once he hears that alarm. And then follows me step for step almost all day long. Uh, I think mine, like, anticipate the alarm clock, man. I wake up and they're like, you know, they think they're lap dogs. They're freaking 80 pounds and they're, like, standing on your chest looking in your face like, hey, dude, it's time to get up. Come on, I got to pee. It's time to get up. <laughs> That'd be a... Uh... Yeah, Bubba's not no near no fucking eighty pounds. That's got to be a, quite the blow. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, it sucks. They think they're lap dogs, man, and they're they're nowhere close. <laughs> That's another okay. tip I have, though for people too. Uh, if you take your dogs out hiking and stuff with you, like I do, don't let them back into your grow room. A lot of people screw up and do that. They don't think about it, you know. Don't let him in there. Yeah, I don't usually let him in here. He's not in trouble. Right? It's one of the things that he just not going to be at my feet and shit. He's not usually allowed in here, but he don't go for a hike, so at least not today. <laughs> yeah. He's been around hanging out in the house all day. See, like, uh, I like to take mine out, you know, like, we'll go hike the lake or up in the mountains or whatever, and I'll take the dogs and just let them roam. And, uh, you know, they're picking up more bugs than you're ever going to find. And you bring them back and they get in your plants and you're done. I actually have that happen. I think you're not the only one. A lot of people have that. Day. Yeah. And they overlook it. Everybody overlooks it, you know. They think, oh, it's just the dog. But then all of a sudden, you notice, like, oh, I took the dog to the lake, and now I got, like, spider mites out of the blue. Because the dog ran through some stupid bush and then went and ran into your garden. Yeah, Twenty Twenty says, uh, no animals in the indoor grow room. It's always good advice. Yeah. Yeah, I've been kind of trying to keep up with chat, but it's not really working too well for me. It is one one of the chorky dogs. <laughs> He's the bigger. Ah. Uh, you see, it was one of the Dorothy dogs. Chorky. Oh, okay. He's part, okay. He's part Yorkie and uh, part Chihuahua. So he's a chorky. All right. I thought you said Dorothy. I was thinking like Wizard of Oz dog for a minute there. <laughs> Come on, Toto. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Yeah, mine are, uh, they're uh, half pit and half lab. And, it's a good uh, sized dog. Yeah, it's a good sized dog, but they're like, they're just full muscle, too, you know? You try to play tug of war with them or something, and it like rips your shoulder. But uh, we put a. <laughs> They started getting, you know, dogs get real territorial and real defensive of their space, you know. And uh, so just because I put a sign on the gate, you know, hey, caution dog, and people kept coming in my gate. So then I put a sign on the gate that says, you know, caution dog will bite you. Dude, I still get dumbasses coming to my gate, and then they yell at me if the dogs go after them. You know, it's like you got to look at the sign to open the freaking gate. And then you're going to open my gate to deliver a package and wonder why the dog's chasing you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, mine say beware dog, but it's, it's not uh, in the bad way. It's just more or less, you know, beware of the dog when you're like coming down my road. Right. Uh, my yard, because I don't like to chain them up either. I thought it's just stupid that you move to the fucking country and then you're going to drive in there and chain your dog up. Yeah, I don't believe in chaining them up. That ain't right. Six one nine is uh, setting you up here. He said, "Ask SoCal who won the fish tattoo." Oh shit! Which one? 
Well, so, uh, so <laughs> all right. Fuck you, Homer. <laughs> that goes out to you, 619. Fuck you. Um, so every year <laughs> we do, before the tuna season, we all put money in the pot, you know, like jackpot. End of the season, biggest fish wins. But you have to take that money and go get ink work done. I like this contest already. Yeah. So uh six one nine's got a big old fat blue fin tattoo. Asshole. <laughs> How big's the tag gotta be? You gotta leave uh, room for years uh, to come. Uh, oh yeah, no, it's not you know, no like full back piece or anything like that. It's you know like three, four hundred bucks worth of ink work. That's badass, though. Especially yeah. if you can do like a sleeve. You think you got that much confidence? You can like just start a like <laughs> start a sleeve. Hope to win every year. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's kind of what. Uh, yeah, hey, hey, six one nine. Fuck you. <laughs> that's that's, that was his plan. He's already got it all drawn out and shit. You know. <laughs> so. I like the idea is the ink as the prize. That's lifetime. You don't even have to have a shelf for it. You get to fucking carry it around and go, yep, four right. years in a row right there. <laughs> That's pretty badass. I like that. It's not like it's something that, you know, if you have to move or whatever, you lose it. <laughs> Girlfriend throw that out in the yard and bust it. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah, we do that, that deal every year, and uh, you want it pretty good. So you got a nice, uh, nice big old bluefin tuna tattoo out of it. Pretty badass. I'm jealous. I'm jonesing for some ink, man. In fact, oh. that was the other fucking text I sent out yesterday morning to my tattoo guy. Miss you, fucker. <laughs> he did too. That was the text he got this morning. I'm missing you, fucker. <laughs> yeah, I want to. The last guy that I uh, got ink from, man. You better hope I never run into him again. He, uh, yeah, that bad. Yeah, it's it's terrible, man. It's absolutely terrible. So I know you got a lot of ink on you, but you got anything that went up through the armpit, like inside your armpit? Uh, just this. Uh, it don't go into the armpit, but it goes a little bit into there. That's about as far as it got. That's a spot, man. I've heard fucking people go, yeah, you don't want to get in. And they, you, I could tell by just that little bit that's in there. <laughs> Not a good yeah. spot. Yeah. The last dude, uh, the last ink I got goes all the way up through the armpit, like into my armpit. And, uh, dude, I've never felt pain like that in my life. But, yeah, uh, actually. What did you get there before I go on about my? You oh, it, I, don't, I don't even know what it is. It's you ever see that show Bad Ink? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, cover ups for you. Yeah, I've applied for that like four times. Oh my god, it's that bad. It's that bad. Yeah, like I don't even know what it was, what it is. <laughs> it's totally like uh, it's not what I asked for. <laughs> oh, what's when? I've forgotten that. <laughs> Let me take a hit of this. I'm sorry for coughing into that mic. I forgot about the uh, armpit. It ain't up deep, deep, deep into the armpit. How deep did they get into the armpit? Oh, it's like all the way up, dude. It's like, you know, oh, three fingers. It's in, in the pit? It's into the tickly. Oh, God. <laughs> dude, that is the worst thing. Don't ever do it. Don't ever do that. <laughs> It's the worst thing I've ever felt in my life. Well, the other thing I got, I got to look. I'm not that, I'm not that deep, but I'm close. I'm like, I'm like maybe like a finger or two for being good up in there. But uh, that's a rough zone, man. And it moves. That's the other thing that I didn't like about that area. Is that area moves as you lift that arm. Oh, hey, you got around the nipple, too. You got some fucking... I like that. Is that a fucking... What kind of bird is that? That ain't bad, brother. 
<laughs> that's hilarious. See, that's how bad it is. <laughs> what is it, was, it? It was supposed to be a freaking knob. Uh, it was supposed to be a tribute piece to my mom when she passed, actually. And really? Yeah, she was all uh, towards the end there. She was really into the Buddhist thing. So her things became koi dragons. So I was going to get a koi dragon crawling out of the grave, you know, to, like as a tribute piece for my mom. And it came out like, uh, I don't know, like alien versus predator got hit with a pig in the face or something, but it's terrible, man. And, uh, well, it didn't look all that bad. It was just kind of the way you were moving. It was hard to, you know, really pick out exactly what it was. That's a tough spot, you know, I'll tell you the other reason that's bad. I, 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 I've got a fucking demon right there. I guess you showed you. I got a fucking this yeah. fucking demon right there. Yeah. That, uh, <clears throat> that was that's the, out of all my tattoos. That's my fucking least favorite, and that thing's like bright red fucking sign on my side. That, right. That dude. That was the first time on a different artist I had gave the artist uh, artistic freedom. It was on my ribs. I showed him what I want. He was like, it was too big. I got a fucking free hand it. And I was like, eh. He didn't want to do it. He made the appointment on his birthday for some fucking reason. Let me drive three hours down to his shop and then wanted to like reschedule a tattoo. And I was like, no, motherfucker, man. I'm sorry. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. But you knew it was your fucking birthday. Let's do some ink. And, right. and oh man he fucking toughed it out and fucking did his shitty job it, I, that's actually two cities right there both of them yes. at least eight hours yeah 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 and that thing moved so terribly I, it wouldn't have been for one it, I would have been a little bit happier if he would have put it down but it, fuck it we'll play huh, let's play this is why I don't look at look at this thing here let me put this camera down here a little bit so we can see this this is what I hate about the, the demon the most. Is look at how much that motherfucker moves from, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, that thing fucking stretches like crazy, and the facial expression fucking moves on it, too. So I, a lot of times I'll be getting out of the shower. If I'm in a fucking good mood and shit, I'll be like, happy demon, sad demon, happy demon, sad demon. <laughs> fucking make it do all kinds of things. But you artists, man, you would think. You would go, hey, man, you would want to work with the body and you'd want that stretch to be my, you know, that would have been a good place for like a bird to make that wing expand or something like that. Right, Not a right. fucking demon that stretches out fucking like silly putty. That's all. Uh, <laughs> every time I see that bitch, man, I fucking, I get my tip, my current tattoo guy, man. He like, I go in there, like get some work done and he's like trying to show off my ink for me. You know what I mean? Because I've got a lot of great pieces that he's done. So a lot of times he's like, bust out them feet, man. You know, or, you know, <laughs> see that right. leg. Currently, you know, the last one has kind of been the, the eagle on the chest. So he'll be like, pop off that shirt, man. Let's fucking show these guys you're fucking. So I got to pop off the shirt. And then I got that fucking demon right there. And every time I'm fucking trying to show off the eagle, I got to show him. I'm like, man, you got to do this for it. He's like, yeah, I can fix that up just for and that'll be the third sitting in on that bitch, which is scar tissue at that point. You know what I mean? That third time in on something like that, it's going to be fucking painful. And that's, but, that's a shitty spot, too, man. That one hurts. Oh, yeah. I got yeah, my other one yeah. done, too. Remember right the old... around the nipple, too. You fuck around. He took it right around the nipple and everything. He gave you, that had to be a rough, was that all in one city? Did he do that in one city? Oh, uh, that was two. That was two sittings. Either way, what a fucking trooper, man. That's fucking pain. Two painful areas right there on that nipple and up in the armpit and the ribs. That's three oh, yeah. bad zones. Well, and dude, here's the thing is that piece was supposed to just be like, you know, like a chest shoulder type piece, right? Like just right up, you know, kind of like up here into the, like right there, you know, just that area. Dude, he started at the hip and went all the way up. Oh, uh, I, I did the same thing, you know. Like, I, I told the, the artist what I wanted and you know how I wanted it and you know what I was going for and the whole nine yards. Was like, oh yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, but I got to freehand it. 
and he just totally screwed it up, you know. He both. I tell you what, that guy right here both ruined me for the next artist, an artist seems to go. It really, I'm just now to the point. This last artist, I practically let him do this whole left leg. <clears throat> I picked out the first cat piece, and from then on, it was like, okay, we're going to work up the leg here. There was times where I didn't even know what the fuck I was getting until the day I showed up into the shop. I kind of had an idea that I'd go up and he'd be like, no, oh, I've got this thing right here for that. And I'd be like, yeah, that's badass. Let's throw, this, oh. let's throw that fucker on there. But man, it because of the demon, it, I was so fucking freaked out for the longest time about people fucking coming at me. And, and I still am. You know, if I, if I were to ever leave Pat over there at Dark Horse, I would, uh, I'd want to see a lot of ink before I kind of <laughs> gave out a free reign. That's for sure. Yeah, that, yeah, because that's forever. <laughs> you know, or, uh, or you're sitting to get it covered up, and that's even worse. Yeah, yeah. I got a cover up. something that big. I got my cover up picked out for this whole big old piece of crap on my side, but. Man, sitting for that thing is just going to be brutal. RSO, brother. RSO. RSO. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, that's my dirty little tattoo secret right there. Oh, yeah. And that's where, yeah, that day, that's kind of where he went wrong with me because he wanted to tap out. And that's another lesson I've learned too on this tab, hey. on this fucking tattoo right here. If your artist is ready to tap out, let that yeah. fucker tap out. Let yeah. him tap out. Yeah. And uh, Amen. that day I didn't. I didn't. I, I was full RSO that first round. I was taking it. Them ribs really good. And he was in there. He wanted to just do the album and make me come back. I'm like, fuck that. I'm good. Keep going. And yeah. Yeah. Lesson. Huge lesson learned right here. Yeah. That's another thing, too, with the new guy that I work with. He's ready to tap out as much as I'd like a finished tattoo that day. He looks at me and says, ah, yeah. I've had enough. Cool. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I learned that lesson. <laughs> yeah, it was funny when I got this uh, my rib piece done. Uh, what do you got picked so, out? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I want to do... So it's going to have to be a huge cover-up in color. I mean, it, it goes from, you know, like my belt line all the way up, you know, all the way up to my shoulder. So oh, I do, uh, that's it. that's huge. it's fucking huge, dude. <laughs> it's huge. But uh, I want to do, I got this photo that I've been looking at of a school of tuna feeding on a bait ball. And I think I, I, think I could work that in the way I want it. That sounds pretty badass. That's yeah, going to be costly cover up, too. Oof. It's going to be, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the last person that I talked to about doing it after I went and checked a bunch of his work was talking about, like, you know, four grand and uh, multiple, multiple, multiple sessions. So he was estimating... Uh, close to 50 60 hours of actual some time to do it it sounds right though for a good cover up you know a detail to bury that thing as big as it is that sounds really right though the only thing i've yeah. been like like we <laughs> <laughs> sounds pretty good what does that figure mean in we <laughs> right i'm pretty sure we could probably do that out here Oh yeah, tattoo guys love sweet. Oh yeah, yeah, but that's I don't I don't know if I want to really sit for uh, you know a bunch of five, seven, eight hour sessions again like that. You know, every couple of weeks, that's just gonna after a while, it's gonna be brutal. Yeah, well, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Yeah, you know, it'd be you know, right. Like you said, it's for life. Might not be as bad in smaller sections like that. 
yeah, I'm the the where areas I'm worried about is like you know up around the nipple and the armpit. That's gonna hurt because he's gonna have to do a, a you know it's gonna have to get bigger too. So it's gonna have to go even deeper into the armpit. And that was uh, that was the worst thing I've ever felt in my life. As a matter of fact, when I was getting that done, uh, six one nine nerd was sitting there almost crying he was laughing so hard because i was like biting on a towel freaking you know had a shirt over my head and you know dude he he made the joke he's like oh dude it looks like you're going into labor i was like well shit this probably hurts worse oh i ain't gonna lie man i fucking that uh <clears throat> that rib fucking tattoo right there was like a week's worth of fucking sit-ups my fucking, my fucking gut was as tight as it could fucking get fucking that whole fucking eight hours of just uh, yep. <laughs> yeah the ribs man that's don't ever do that one for your first ink that yeah, was that's, your first that was my first good size ink yeah oh my god yeah, yeah. <laughs> cause you know I figured hey I'll get the ribs out of the way, you know. That way, I don't got to, everything else after that. I'll be good. I kind of went with the, that mentality too, but that's not <laughs> the best route. <laughs> yeah, that's not the best route. Do you like the calf or something first? You know, move on to the ribs later. Sounds Yeah, like when uh, when I had my calf, because you know I got my tuna on my calf. And, uh, dude, I fell asleep when he was doing that one. That's another thing. I've done that, too, but that's scary, too, man. That's waking up with whatever and, yeah, fucking permanent. God damn, I don't remember fucking freeing to that. <laughs> I've yeah. kicked a few times, too, when, during tattoos. I've slept and, you know, fucking twitched. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Sorry about that. <laughs> yep. I've got an extra line on, on this tattoo. I can't remember where it's at. Oh, right there. Right there. You can see that little stray fucking mark right there. It's fucking, I was sleeping during that bitch and fucking jumped during that shit. I'm like, sorry. He's like, no problem. Sorry about that mark. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's your fault, not yeah, mine. Right, we're even. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good call. We're even. Yeah, that ribs though, man. That was brutal. But, uh, any, uh, ink? Well, yeah, you said your calf. Is that all you got? Is the, the ribs and the calf there? Both ribs, the calf, and then uh, one on the back of my shoulder that um, the guy that was started doing it passed away between sessions. So I figured, you know what? I'm just going to leave it as is. Not a bad idea there. Yeah. I mean, him, huh? Yeah. You know, and that one's actually good. It, you know, he was doing great work at the time. And then, you know, he passed and couldn't get it finished. So I figured, screw it. That's how it's meant to be now, you know. Right. But yeah, the That's one what I'm afraid of during the back piece. <laughs> Trying to get a back piece started on something like that. Yeah, that's going to be brutal. I've heard like right up the spine is just uh, almost as bad as the ribs. Girls can have, I've seen a lot of women that have their spine fucking tattooed and they're all like, it ain't bad, but them fucking women handle that shit a lot different in certain yeah. spots. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know though. I challenge any of them to do their ribs in their armpit. <laughs> I don't think anybody's seen do some chicks get their ribs done and be like fucking that, that little gal sat there like a fucking trooper. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. She's a, a little gal. She went she went like five hours on them ribs and was just sitting there. Damn, yeah. I, she had my respect. That's kinda of hard to do too. She was like, I'm like you're a trooper. You are a trooper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a minute there, it starts going numb, and then it just starts to hurt even worse after that. Man, I made the mistake of the second sitting. Uh, 
when he went back over this, he, he went over it. He felt so bad. It looked so bad the first time. He went over it completely again. Three, uh, the second time. Eight hours. Oh, and man. fucking, I tell you what, the biggest mistake I made in doing that was he talked me in the, like midway going to uh, get something to eat. He was hungry. I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go eat. So we took like a fucking walk over and go to this rusted down restaurant, take like an hour break. He has a couple of drinks and shit, which I don't, I wasn't, didn't give two shits about that. But uh, I come back and fucking uh, the adrenaline was completely gone. You know what I mean? Once you get that adrenaline going, it's pretty easy. To, it's easier to deal with the pain. Yeah. It was all gone, man. It, it was all it was so painful trying to get back in there and get back into the rhythm. The second half was oh, so, so brutal. I was I was asking for the numbing spray. He's like, and he was like, man, that shit's expensive. I'm like, I'll pay you for the fucking bottle, man. Just get in there and give me some of the fucking spray. Calm that shit down a little bit. Uh, yeah, after it's all tender and it sat there for a little bit, and yeah, that hurts going back over that. So my guy was doing the same thing. I got a hilarious story though. Um, so six one nine nerd got his daughter's name done, and uh, while he was in there doing that, some chick comes walking into the studio and was asking the the artist if he was hiring because she wanted to learn, you know, she wanted to learn, she wanted to do an apprenticeship. So he stopped and he's talking to her for a little bit and she's just like on spun out tweaker. And, uh, he asked her for a portfolio and all this. And she's like, Oh, I don't, I don't have one. So, you know, he pretty much sent her on down the road, took, you know, 30 minutes dealing with her, goes back to finishing up his, uh, six one nine's ink. So a bunch of the people that were in this, you know, in there just hanging out, walked out front and uh this shit comes walking out of the, the the tattoo shop talking about how she just wants to uh you know learn how to tat and date a tattoo artist so she can fuck a tattoo artist and get free ink and all this shit right so i looked at her and i go hey uh you want to go get a pizza and fuck and everybody around just looks at me like what the fuck and then she goes, well, God, no, no. Well, what's wrong, baby? You don't like pizza? Dude, that was the funniest shit ever. And then a couple nights later, you go back and we're doing my shit. And 619 nerds over there freaking laughing his ass off while I'm getting my, uh, you know, my ink on my uh, my armpit and my ribs. Dude, it, it was hilarious over there, man. For that chick, dude, that was, the look on her face when I said that was hilarious. Oh, tattoo chefs are a whole nother world. Dude, it, it's like, yeah. <laughs> Talk about going down a rabbit hole, man. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, crazy days in the tattoo shops. Oh, yeah, those places are, uh, they're, they're a whole different animal. Yeah, they are. I got the damn. I was trying to do the chat. I lost chat over here. I keep trying to pay attention to it, man, but it's like it's hard to read it all the time. Four twenty four twenty's had a great time tonight. Thank you for tuning in, brother. Appreciate it. Chiba Man, Trey Valone, UKSIF420. Man, it feels so good to be saying these names again. Sir How, how you doing, my friend? Green Mountain Grower, Chris Mertz, holding it down in chat. Humble Grower 420, Organic for Life. Of course, SoCal's friend, 619. Welcome to the show. Let me see if I can get into chat here real quick. Oh, I'm not gonna let him go without the sign sound bite. <clears throat> what wabbit season? It's wabbit season. <laughs> uh, well, you guys know you guys know you like the rabbit holes. Come on. Oh, Come dude. On. 
I, 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 think, I, look, I think it's funny myself, some of it. Hey, the rabbit hole's where it's at, man. I even brought that shit up with uh, Danko yesterday. I'm like, man, do you free jump in on some of the mushroom rabbit holes at any time, man? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Scroll back a little bit. Man, I don't know how you do it. You go like keep up with chat and talk and all that at the same time. It's rough. It's not easy. <laughs> There's other times where I've got other shit going too, like uh, say if the guest uh, isn't on camera, you know what I mean? Right. They don't want to put their face out there. A lot of times I'm working their Instagram as well on another screen, watching chat and, <laughs> and the video screen. I've got three screens right over on my end that I'm trying to keep an eye on. Dude, I'm having a hard time keeping up with two. <laughs> It gets to me where you know I, I t actually took a lot of time and so I built this whole cart this whole thing I'm using I built it rearranged several times to, like, <laughs> it's actual wheels so yeah. what's that this is whole, look this whole thing's actually at wheels check it out watch your screen we can roll back and forth. <laughs> I can move it around and shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I got the phone going and trying to use the tablet and all that, and it's like, I'm not having, not having success keeping up. No worries. They know you all. Uh, you're welcome. Oh, yeah. You would. Yeah, no, just shout out to everybody in chat, man. It's hard. I don't know how you does it, like, you know, line by line by line by line, man. That's that's nuts. Sometimes I think that's how I fuck up the names is I'm trying to blow through there so fast and uh, not trying to fuck up anything, but do. What's up, Boulevard? God, I'm glad to see that name tonight. I've seen a couple in here tonight that I haven't ever seen before. It's been, uh, you, ever, you know, you guys talk about how you guys gotten used to this, man. I have gotten, I'm shocked. That I can't believe how, how much I've missed this the last few days, man. I have. <laughs> Been seeing these names pop across the screen and chatting with uh, some of the people that are usually on the screen with me. Mr. Smiley. I haven't seen Mr. Smiley in like fucking days. At least I actually think it's more than because he was busy through the weekend trimming and bullshit. So I, I don't think I've even talked to Smiley, you know, face to face in like a week. Yeah, that's. Uh, Came. Go ahead, friend. Oh, I, no, I, I know that uh, when I talked to you this morning, man, you, you, you seem pretty stressed out about that internet thing. <laughs> they could tell that shit had you pissed. Yeah, I can't wait for it to be over. I put up with it way too long, way too long. Aldrich25 saying IG is not the same vibe. You know what? He's kind of right, man. Like, ever since Sub passed, IG's got, I don't know, different. It's like without his posts, it's not the same. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I definitely miss it. The dude hanging out in them chats and everything. And just the vibe he put out. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it was always funny. Like, dude, he was a dick to some people. You know, he, he didn't like putting up with people's shit. <laughs> you know, it go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. A lot of times, sometimes you feel bad about that shit, too, man. Fucking oh, yeah. I talked to him later on that night. I'd hate being a dick, but I just wouldn't let up or whatever. 
Yeah. You knew how to brush it off and not take it to heart. And that's another conversation I had with him many, many, many nights. But how the fuck do you rocks being thrown at you night after night? You know, right. I... I'm like, man, I'm a fucking nobody. And like, just little things get me, much less, uh, you know, whole chats just throwing rocks and fucking Instagram throwing rocks at you and shit. He'd be like, they're talking about me flat out, you know? It's, it's whatever, you know? It's good for the business. He did it for you. He, that's how he always brushed it off. It's good for the business. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I miss that dude, man. You dropped a lot of knowledge. Thank you, Dake Agenda. I appreciate that. Awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up over here, but it's kind of hard. That's another thing, too, is you know, even if he was an asshole, he would quick to... Uh, <clears throat> Say sorry later on, you know. Yeah, it worked out, worked out a yeah. little bit. He tried to make it right somehow. But yeah, man, people would get all over him for the stupidest little shit, you know. And he just took it. I know I've said this a thousand times too, but man, he was it was a he was a different dude off off the. He did have an incredibly big heart and a cool dude. Yeah. Oh, he definitely loves that plan. I was willing to help people. A lot of people don't realize. Well, yeah. Look at the, I mean, look at the Weedner shows. You know, they were uh, nothing but education. It's free education. Thanks. On the picture of the fucking hat I had. Weed nerd hat. He wore it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was actually fucking really bummed when he passed, man. That hit shit hit me really hard. Yeah, I didn't even know until, uh, Actually, it was 619 that told me. Sent, shot me a text at work. I didn't believe him at first. I thought he was talking shit. Yeah, me too. I didn't want to believe uh, Are we losing Eagle? I think he might have froze, huh? Am I froze? Uh, you're you're kind of spotty. In. Oh, rats. Oh, I bet it's because I'm playing. Oh, I know which phone's working the internet. Oh, there you <laughs> <go>. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I know which. I know where the internet's coming from. As soon as I started playing with that phone, that's when it started fucking up. Yeah, you kind of kind of faded out there for a minute. Who else is hanging out in chat, man? Let's. Uh... Well, I got a cheater way of thanks to Boom Farms of uh, telling me that it won't tell me exactly who's here. It tells me who's uh, active in chat anyway, and uh, so. They are 2020, Aldridge 20 Farm, Boom Farms, Chiba Man, Dank Agenda, DOA Grown Meds, Humble Grown, our Humble Grower 420, Organic for Life, Smoke and Grow Fraser, Fleur Howe, and Trey Valone are at least active. And there's currently 39 people watching. But not 39 people in chat. Right? Yeah, everybody jump in. Start talking to each other. 
know, UK SIF just hopped in. You can see when they do because the list goes up and down as they, they chat. Yeah, yeah. Moon, Moon Farm showed me how to do that shit. And the modern genetics. I don't think I said that one. No, we're fucking working on you took her all the way to the fucking took her all the way down, brother. Oh no shit, huh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Nobody had any questions or anything? Grow style or whatever. Yeah, it's a good time to sneak them in. Yeah, anybody's wanting questions or whatever. Throw them out. I just out. lost I my fucking chat. chat. You lost chat. I can finally see chat. <laughs> see, that's the yin and yang. For some right. reason, I accidentally he clicked the X on that fucking window and it disappeared. Just like low, low. God, I can't wait to have real internet. I might actually feel like I. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, he froze up again for a second. What a bummer. You know what I just, I'm just i most pissed about now? is because I closed that window, I won't know who the fuck... I won't be able to trace the chat back as far. Oh, just back to when you reopened it, huh? Yep. Oh, that God, sucks. that sucks. That sucks. It does, because I like to go as far back as I can. And that's limiting too on how good the chat was because if it rolls real fast, I can only go back so many messages. So I, if the chat's really burning out, there's no getting back to the beginning of the show. It, it will only let me go back so far. Oh, uh, yeah, I think yeah, you, can yeah. you can go back through YouTube it's and get it all the sound boy. Watch or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can rewatch the show, but I can't do it, you know, the shout out as live. Yeah. You know, yeah. Usually that's what I'm doing at the end of the show is scrolling back as far as I can. But yeah, I can read the chat afterward. Yeah. So you ready for that sound boy? You want to give me the sound boy they're asking for? Hell yeah. Actually, that's for a long, long time ago. Oh, that's all good. What Anytime time? you're ready, my friend. This is SoCal Weed Nerd. Just sitting here talking shit with Eagle Gardens. Take two. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Who was it the other night that was having a yeah. shitload of people with it? Somebody was cracking up doing it. It's not Maybe as easy. It. There's a lot of people have messed it up, but you forgot the fucking man. I forgot what? I know you ain't afraid of the F word. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> you, you, you said talking shit. You oh, said did I? Talking shit with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I did, I did. Okay. All right. Take two. <laughs> All right. SoCal Weed Nerd, we're just sitting here fucking talking shit with Eagle Gardens. Hell oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect on the second run. Oh, man. I'm going to feel so blessed when I get to it. A lot of people are like, oh, that's going to be so much work. That's going to be one of the fucking greatest days of my life running that shit back to make that thing. <laughs> that's going to be fucking amazing. I'm there gonna, you that's go. gonna be all those sound bites stored that up. That will yeah. not be work. That, well, actually, I haven't even instilled it yet. Jack told me that uh, I should be, I have many options on my end. I could be recording this. Before, but I don't I cut this through Zoom. So I let it go through uh, YouTube and go back. And, uh, but I could very smartly i think it might have been smiley that pointed it out just hit record right when you're saying it just record that oh just that little bit yeah yeah 
before I could record the whole episode or whatever, but I haven't done that. I've only done it for a couple of them, and then I gave that lap to my daughter, Lexi. So still go through episode by episode. All I I don't think it's that bad. All I you know it's random every yeah. It's a whole lot of work to find them. But yeah, I gotta go through back all every episode, clip that out of fucking every one of them. Oh damn, that's gonna be a lot I of work. I don't think it would be too bad. Well here, let me give you a better uh, one. Not really. I actually if you want, go ahead. I got a better one for you. And you can clip this one or not, but yeah, a little tribute to the man. Okay. You can't tell me, so I have a report. You're kind of ready. Anytime you're ready, I'll hit record. All right. Let's actually record now. So there you go. All right. Get your bowls, your bongs, your pipes, your vaporizers, your big fat blunts. It's time to get high with a SoCal weed nerd. Because we're here talking fucking shit with Evil Gardens. That, that was perfect. That was even better. I think that was the best one out of them all. Yes, but I like that one. I wish little, I could start the show with that every day. That's fucking tribute. badass. Right there. Was a good one too. That's not an easy spiel right there. I've tried to do that once or twice, and it's it hard is. to get through. It's hard to get through it. It, it is hard. Yeah. yeah. Then again, he was doing it every episode. So, remember, though. what's that? There've been episodes where they fucked it up, or I remember Miss Jill kind of stu- stuttering through it one or two episodes and shit. Yeah. Yeah, she couldn't. Yeah, she'd miss up like uh, you know, try to combine like vaporizer and blunt and shit all together a couple times. And yeah, it was, there was a couple cool outtakes of that. Oh, I forgot too. I got this other window rolling. Oh, sweet internet's coming. That's what I tell myself now all day long. Uh, yeah, these companies are no fun to deal with. So, uh, when you you and six one nine are out there fishing, what do you guys? Uh, what's your favorite catch? Uh, I gotta say the, the yellowfin tuna. The yellowfin tuna, man. There, there's just nothing that fights back like those things. Those and uh, yellowtail. I think pound for pound, yellowtail is probably the funnest one to catch. So you say pound for pound, how many pounds nice size uh, tuna? Oh, do they go anywhere out here from like, uh, like our bluefin tuna? We don't get them like the East Coast where they're getting like, you know, thousand pound fish. But we're getting, you know, big, big ones out here, like two, three hundred pounds. And you know, average is like thirty to between thirty and eighty. But man, those things will take you for a ride. You get done fighting that, and you just want to go sit down and have a coke and a smoke and relax for a little while. You don't even want to try to throw another line out and get another one for a minute. You want to rest. In uh, like physical dimensions, how big is that? Is that like six foot? No, not not even close to that. Like. Uh, Probably three, maybe four, depending on, you know, big ones. But average is like, you know, if you like hold the tail up to your chin, you know, it's down to down to your knees. So they're not massive, that's but it. they that's fight. size fucking fish. Yeah. Bigger than anything I've ever caught. That's for damn sure. I used to be all about bass fishing. And then I started fishing in the salt water and it was like, well, wait a minute, you know. Bass, I'm using like, you know, eight and 10 pound line. Out here, I'm using like, you know, 100. So bass fishing kind of got boring after that. Yeah, I'm just not good on big water. <laughs> it's not going to lie to anybody, man. If I can't swim back to that land or if I know I'm in like, you 
know, swimming distance. Woo! I get fucking weird. I gotta be smoking like the fucking whole time. Yeah. No, I don't care. And see, that's the thing too. Like, you, if you take like these, you know, these charter boats out here, and uh, our our charter boats, I've looked like you know around the country to see how they fish and like you know that style there, or this style here, or whatever. And our charter boats out here on the West Coast are way different. It's you know full on tourist trap, but they're super strict. Like they tell you on the way out, you know, if you got anything with you, dump it because we'll take this fucking boat and go home. So you got to be really stealth, even though it's legal. Yeah, that's, uh, that sucks. I'm telling you right now, too. Uh, I just, I have no fucking want to know. I don't give a shit what's under that water. That could be fucking, that's, that's space as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? That's fucking outer space as far as I'm concerned. I just oh, yeah. ain't got no business being under there. I ain't got no, you know, fucking. And being out there kind of catching shit like that would, would only further me not wanting to be out there. You know, just catching random fucking three, four, five, six foot fucking fish and shit. I'd be like, no, 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 no. Turn this fucking boat around. This thing, this thing sinks. That motherfucker's eating me. Yeah. Get oh, me yeah. back on land, man. Oh, no. Believe me, I know what's under that water. You're not catching my ass getting off that boat in the water. <laughs> I know it's down there. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. See, like out here when we fish, you know it's time to move spots when the hammerheads and the Makos and all those start circling your boat. I, the, well, I, I'm, once. It was not a good trip. The first fucking trip out, we, you know, first trip out, we go through the channel. We kind of get stuck on a fucking uh, sandbar. Oh, shit. So I actually had to get the fuck out of the boat. That was not good at it. And push it, you know, give her a nice little shove, get us going again, which wasn't a great experience because I'm, I'm not good. I don't like that shit. I don't. If I want to swim, I'm getting in the fucking pool, to be honest. <laughs> and fucking, uh... <laughs> So we get out to we get out there and I start fishing. The first thing I pull up it was like a fucking it was a zebra head fish, which was you know they're not huge, but I pull this thing up and it is like fucking squealing at me, and then fucking pull go to pull the fucking hook out of its mouth and this thing's got like human teeth. It doesn't have like fish teeth like I'm used to. You know what I mean? Like little sharp bass teeth or whatever. This thing's got like fucking it's smiling at me like it just rented a grill and shit. I'm like, Fuck <laughs> this, you know. <laughs> it just uh, yeah, I was uh, yeah, yeah. We fished out there for the day and I was like, yeah, I'm off the bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. That's probably as close as big sea fishing as I'll probably ever get right there. But never yeah, say see- never. You never know. We get down there, you know, we leave at like 10 o'clock at night on these boats, you know, between 9 and 10. So we get down there and tailgate in the parking lot beforehand, you know, and then go jump on the boat and you go to sleep, dude, and it's like sleeping in a moving coffin. Actually, uh, somewhere on my Instagram, there's uh, pictures of me inside one of the bunks, dude. And it's like, if you're claustrophobic, you're screwed because you're going you're gonna to go into panic mode in there, man. It's tight. In fact, I can, I can even do what, what's that when the when the stories when you go like backwards into a story, like a Tarantino movie where you fucking start at the end and go back to the beginning. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm gonna do right here. So, leading up to the trip, Florida trip here down there, on that in particular trip. I have a friend of mine uh, that I work with, worked with at the time, uh, still a good friend, uh, who owns a sailboat. That was his weekly passion. Because he went out, fucking raced sailboats, fucking every weekend. He's like, hey, man, you want to fucking go sailing with me? We're coming up this weekend and fucking need I could use an extra hand and, uh, you know, on the boat. 
now. I don't know what good gonna fucking be, you know. He's like, man, basically, I, I just fucking asked for weight. You know what I mean? When we, when we got to lean, I need the next person for the, for the bowl. You know, it's just, uh, you don't need to know how to do nothing but really fucking hold on. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, whatever. It would, still not too cool on the big water, but it's back when I was still a little crazy, crazier. So I'm like, yeah, sure. I got out on that water and yeah, again, not so great. So I started drinking. And like I said, I quit drinking like 20 some years ago. So this is an oddball experience for me. It's in the middle of that 25 years. I'm just like, yeah, fuck it, give me a beer. So I'm drinking and fucking, <laughs> drinking and smoking weed in this race. And ended up, uh, we come to like a slow point where like we just completely lost the wind and had to like fucking just, it slowed down, and I passed out on the bow, bow of the boat, and fucking, I ended up fucking getting back to shore, and I was purple, purple from being fucking sunburnt and passed out, drunk, passed out on the bow, bow of the sailboat, and I fucking go down, I'm so fucking burnt up and shit, I get down to Florida, to Naples, and the People down there are looking at me, you know, wearing beautiful chains and shit. And they're like, where'd you just come from? The sun? Motherfucker and shit. I was just fucking, I didn't even look normal and shit. I was beyond, beyond burnt. I was full of shit. And, uh, uh, that whole trip was fucking, getting it going off into the Gulf after that, and being sunburned. You know, what a long trip. What a long trip that was. <laughs> see we're all about the longer trips you know like we'll leave the night before and go sleep and then wake up and fish the next day that and it's was actually my first flight too but that was about that whole part. Florida was great and everything but uh, being on the water and shit the sailing fuck uh, uh, flying the whole time I'm going, I want to jump out of this bitch. <laughs> Fuck, I'm out of this bitch. with water. Yeah. It's, there's something weird about being out where you can't see the land. It just doesn't feel natural to a lot of people. Oh, it's not. It's not. My head's off to you for you. People that can do this. I'll it tell puts you, me in a space where I'm not good. That's for sure. It's it's an all day party though. It's a fun event. Yeah, I'm cool as long as we can troll, troll up and down the fucking uh, coast where I can at least uh, see it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in a life or death fucking panic, be able with a floaty to get to that shit. Once it, once it gets out of the fucking sight there, man, I'm fucking panicking, man. Hey, well, we got a fucking boat making weird noise. I, I'm better in the air than I am on a boat. I can handle turbulence way better than I can handle a boat. <laughs> or fucking something stupid. Take it out of water. Fuck that, man. I'd be fucking full panic mode. Yeah, we go out like a hundred and one of the spots we hit's a hundred and six miles. So there's no way you're asked swimming back from that. No. Yeah, it's uh. But then there's completely re, re, uh, pass on that shit. <laughs> oh, that's where I'm happy. But see, then again, too, that's why. That's why I like my growth style, because I can take off and leave for a few days and not have to worry about it, you know? So I can actually go do that and not be all stressed out about, oh, what's my water like, or what's happening here, or, you know, oh, is this getting light there, or whatever, and I, I just know it's going to work while I'm gone, so kind of all, you know, makes it better. Yeah, that's another thing. I, my style, I haven't been able to have a vacation yeah see and I'm, I'm comfortable leaving for you know three four or five days at a time and not worrying about it which is uh 
you know, it's, it's you, I've proved that you can do it, you know. I think 42420. How in the fuck? 42420, I'm giving you a shout out. This is your shout out, 42420. I hope you have a great day. To UKS, I 420. Full 420. How are 420s checking out eight fucking minutes before 420? How are you guys doing that? How are you 420, 420? How are you going to bowl before you can take one puff at 420 with 420? Just saying, 420 is like minutes away. <laughs> oh, God. Yikes, Stacy may are uh, still all the way as far as uh, 20 miles. Yeah, I don't blame you. 20 miles is still way the fuck out there. Way the fuck out there. You're running, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I've heard you mention 420, 420 like four or five times at least tonight, man. You got his shout outs. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, he's been pretty, pretty active in chat tonight. Yeah. yeah, he's he's leaving. He was saying his goodbyes there. Oh, okay, okay. But I just can't believe, you know, seeing how 420 is so active in his name, he's going to bail before 420, which is minutes away. Uh, we, we are, like that's, <laughs> well, if it's so prevalent in your name, it seems like you, you, you're going to celebrate 420. I guess maybe he could be somewhere where it's only like 120. 220. Yeah, it's only. It's Fuck you, man. I got another two hours to go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got three. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. Yeah, you're way behind me, are you? It's like, what, one, 115 there? Yeah, it's only like 115. Uh, yeah. It's 420 here. I was supposed to wake up in the morning and, uh, Drive all the way up to, to Long Beach, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I was planning oh, on getting, like, uh, I, hope I, didn't put a up there. I just don't see that happening. I hope I didn't put a K blast on that. Huh? Uh, we're getting like every other Good syllable, day. you're not even full, full word. <laughs> I said, I hope this. Uh, I, I hope I'm not the reason for the cancellation on that early morning trip there. Oh no, not at all, not at all. I was uh, I was looking forward to it all week, and then like I got off work tonight, and I'm like, fuck, I ain't doing shit this weekend. I'm done. This weekend's all about sitting on the couch and rewatching the fucking talking shit with Eagle episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching the Danny Danko episode. <laughs> no, I meant your episode. Oh. Hopefully nah. you'll be re-watching your episode. I might. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to hear my stupid ass. <laughs> uh, not that bad. <laughs> I was like that when I first started this but that was uh, one of the keys into uh helping me with the show was re-watching it uh re-listening to it and uh see what i was doing wrong trying to find out what i was doing wrong you know what i mean when i was talking with people so chris mertz and uh trey valone are talking about you know fishing and tripping at the same time don't do it <laughs> it's a bad idea yeah um, just whatever you're pulling out of the water, you don't know what the fuck you're pulling out of the water. Well, you well the way we fish out here, you're in a boat with like 30 people you don't know, and you're tripping out already because you don't know these people, and then you're tripping on the boat moving and you know everything going on. It's yeah, it's not a fun combination. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're pulling like uh, looking fish over the rail that are tripping you out even more. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. Oh it's yeah, not a... <laughs> does not sound like a fucking good combination. I like both. 
on land. Oh, <laughs> or one at a time but you want to see me really wake out man that'd be the time to fucking take me out of land so i fucking dose me up man i'd be fucking to run across that water like jesus <laughs> I, there's a lake out here that uh they got a bunch of rocks in the lake and they're like an inch below the water line so you always see these idiots that, you know, never been there or whatever, put their boat in and just nail these rocks. And uh, I got a picture of me. We pulled up right next to it. And I got out and had my buddy take a picture of me, standing all, you know, spread eagle Jesus style, like I was on the cross type deal, on top of the water. But I'm really standing on a rock, but it's, you know, you can't see it. So it looks like I'm standing in the middle of the lake. That one was pretty cool. I used to trip people out with that. <laughs> But that's probably a cool aspect right there. Yeah, it was a cool photo. But you know, it's funny talking about like, you know, you can't deal with the, the big water. We always see these Navy people, you know, because San Diego's huge for Navy. And you always get these Navy guys that are on like, you know, their weekend pass or whatever. So they're all, oh, we're going to go tuna fishing. Dude, they're the first motherfuckers to throw up. <laughs> You're not even out of the harbor and they're over there puking off the side of the boat. See, it's not like the gentle rocking or nothing. I, I can handle that. It's just not being able to uh, feel safe, you know what I mean? Not being able to control the surrounding. Yeah. Oh, you have no control. You, you, you have no control about nothing. And I'm good in, like, any other environment, you know, but water. For some reason, water is not good for me. At least deep water, deep, big. I call it big water. I'm not good on big water. Lakes and shit like that. That's so bad. Yeah, big big water. Different. It gets kind of weird, you know. All you see is water. It's not natural, you know. It's not something you like really think you should be doing. We don't even know what the fuck's under there. We don't even. You know, <laughs> it's a whole other world. We have these. We know more about outer space than we know about our own. That's oh, yeah. Right yeah. No, they're always finding some weird new shit down there. Fish with, like, lights on their heads to attract prey. My luck, that'd be the day they they find something new. Me. <laughs> they're, like, just strumming through. Oh, look, there's eagle. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Looks just like a worm with that bald ass head. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of strong through chat here. My friend told me now, about 419. I think we're going to take a rip and uh, probably call it. Call yeah, it I, evening. Let's get some uh, more. But, uh, I do appreciate it, man. You didn't even fuck around, man. We didn't even do like a loop, so we laid one down like, the first night. Mm-hmm. After that, fucking all guest. Appreciate that shit. You're, you're uh, good. Awesome. A good night, man. I appreciate this shit. Oh, hell yeah, dude. It was a blast. Absolute blast. It's time to uh, smoke one up. Yeah, I'm cheating now, and I'm going to take a dab. It's already 420. Happy 420, everybody. 420, 420, if you're still out there, happy 420. Everybody else that has 420 in that name, happy 420. Especially if it's actually 420. That one hit hard, too. Actually, it was admiring uh, Green 13 dab and meth the other night. Even though I don't approve of them Alexis and shit like that, I thought it was cool the way he used his for dabs and shit. I'm not big on the dabs. I'm, uh, I go back and forth on it. Yeah, I like the flower more than anything. Ha, <laughs> 
that's a good reason not to right there. Ouch. Yeah. Ooh, that burn. Well, the first and time some I ever oil come out of the honey collector dripped on my leg. Shit was hot. Hot. Yeah, See me first, jump. First time I ever did a dab, I ended up watching like uh, you know that Lifetime TV channel. All the stupid like soccer moms kill their husband shows. I watched like four of those back to back to back because I couldn't freaking reach the remote. Oh man, I have to feel for it. It's just spousal abuse right there, punishment. Yeah, the Lifetime Network is a whole different beast here. Man's always. Always wrong. You're getting all spotty again there, you. That's all right, I guess. <laughs> Deb got me. <coughs> Deb got me. That's what they do. All right, Mr. SoCal. You want to... Uh, Tell everybody where they can find yourself and uh, give anybody shout outs that you want to give shout outs to before we head out. Uh, yeah, you can find me at uh, Instagram, uh, SoCal619. And uh, usually, you know, on the weeknights and more uh, weekends, I'm hanging out in the chat, fucking talking shit with Eagle Gardens. Hell yeah. Look forward to seeing you. I remember the first time I seen that name pop up. I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, I'm yeah. honored to have you in the chat. I, uh, I kind of, you know, some of the stuff on, on my other stuff, I got to kind of change it up a little bit. But, you know, I'll stick with that name for a long time. Especially now. Right now. It's a good identifier back to the old clay. Right, right. So, and then, uh, you know, Jack Screenstock, you know, get a hold of me, uh, DM me on IG or something, and uh, let's talk about getting that cut to you that uh, the Eagle wants to get you. That's awesome. I'm sure he may take you up on that, that's for sure. Yeah, cause I believe he's fairly close to me, so... You know, I'll meet him up and uh, and get him one. Actually, I have uh, I have a couple ready to go right now if he wants one. So, uh, Jack Screenstock, if you want that, get a hold of me. I appreciate it if he did. Then I, that way I know it's got another backup home. Because that cut right there does have another backup home. You're the sole holder of that cut right now. Oh, shit. Okay. I'll make sure that uh, – well, I just – I got five that just got transplanted the other day, so I'll make sure that thing stays around for as long as it needs to be. And actually, if you want one back, I have one uh, I can get to you. Well, see, no, but, uh, you know, that was the least part of the deal. If, you know, before you parted off with it, you at least offered it back. So it doesn't have to be now, but, it, you know, whenever. Yeah, no, that, that thing's not leaving my grow room for years to come so if you ever need a cut of that man I, you got my number it's it's yours you know. and that's forever that you go you know. so actually my I uh, like hearing that. my uh my nine pound that i have right now that's in flower you know i don't use the little tags or any of that i use uh, another little tip i have for people real quick is take a piece of painter's tape like the blue or the green painter's tape and put that on your pots. You won't lose the tag that way and forget which is which. But uh, my little tag on my pots is Eagle's Hammer. That's pretty badass. I like that too. It's never, I've never labeled like that, but I'm not going to say I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just cut, and you were, you were generous enough to pass it on to me. So that'll be forever the Eagle cut, you know? Well, there's a reason why there that cuts labeled like that. You want to know why it's labeled like that? What's that? 
that uh, that that nine pound hammer actually came from tester nine pound hammer. So that would that hammer is a uh, pre-release, okay? And then uh, once Jinxie kind of left PG, uh, uh, somehow or another the the Hell's OG cut that he had was up. Uh, you know, something happened to it or whatever. So they actually put in another hell OG. That's where the purpling comes from. It's the oh, second okay. round of breeding. Because yours, mine, won't turn purple. It doesn't turn right. purple. The flavor profile is different than the most. That, the one that you got it seems to be the color. The one that phenotype seems to be the coupling so they that's why it is that cut is uh that that thing that in particular cut has been a lot late 2012 early 2013 oh nice. that, that plant's been alive so that's why it's labeled eagles cut because it's it was hunted obviously by me and it was it stands out from anything that was released after so nice. That's why I labeled it the way I did. It's a damn good cut. And yeah. uh, the bubble hash off that will knock your ass out in a hurry. That's definitely. That's always been my nighttime string. Like, fucking, you want to make sure you're going to bed? That's the last joint of the night right there. Please for me. Yeah, that's definitely a, uh, you don't want to wake and bake with that one. Your day's over with before it starts. Very true, very true. Well, shit, man, my dogs are going crazy on something hard here. I gotta see yep, I'm just going to run through the shout outs and uh, sign out myself. Again, thank you for your time, man. I appreciate uh, it more than you know, man. Dude, thanks for having me. It was an honor. Absolute honor. And everybody in chat, man. Shout out to everyone. I'm not at a, I can't go through everybody line by line, but everyone out there. I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll be hanging out in the chat tomorrow's show too. So, well, as you know, that is now that you're a past guest, that automatically throws you up onto the late night. Yeah. Sessions, if you're welcome, you're always welcome to that. You see us how it hanging out or whatever, and you want to jump in, shoot some shit, you can jump in with you know who's ever on at that time. It's yeah, always absolutely. an option now, absolutely. Now that I got this uh, whole Zoom thing figured out finally, yeah, hell yeah, I'm down. I'm actually looking forward to one of the sessions. Uh, my head I guess Monday. And uh, something happened at Miranda's family farm. Something came up, uh, and they couldn't do it. So I think it was uh, somebody's birthday. What? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're, we're rescheduling, but they were going to be on Sunday. So I'm thinking maybe instead of uh, throwing in a guest Sunday, I may be doing like a rolling panel. So I oh, don't know. I haven't figured it out. Maybe a Q&A or a rolling panel, something like that, instead of a guest. Try to mix it up a little bit. I miss, I'm kind of th leaning towards that because uh, I miss like Boom and Smiley and everybody. I would, Charlie, I would love to be able to do a spot check in, you know, with everybody and enjoy everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm dealing with my internet issues right now too. So, uh, yeah. hopefully, you know, I'll be able to take you guys out to the, to the grow and kind of walk you through that too. That'd be pretty cool, man. All right, brother, you have an uh, excellent night. Get some rest, and uh, maybe you never know. You might wake up and decide twice on that trip. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a dank night. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow night in chat. Take care, brother. All right. Thanks again, man. Have a good night. Nerd, amazing episode. So grateful that it, he was able to show up and it was even able to take place with the internet troubles that I've been having the last few days. It's almost over, guys.
satellites coming. I'm going from one to three megs to 25, which may not be huge to some of you city guys where it's some hundred meg, whatever, but uh, it's absolutely huge in this form. Thank everybody to, from uh, popping in, starting with Chris Mertz, Sir Howe, Smoke and Grow Frazier, Aldridge 25, Boom Farms, it's Light It Up Again, Tim. Trey Vlong, uh, who else is in here? Hey, dude, can't see John Boy. I seen him earlier, but I was getting a chance to uh, address him. Humble Grower 420 Organic for Life. Thank you so much. Chiba Man, uh, POA Grown Meds. Who else is in here? You guys know, too, I won't be able to go back because I fucking refreshed. Just about at this moment. So, uh, tonight's shout outs will be somewhat limited. Smoke and Grow Frazier, if I haven't said your name, have a great day. Hans Warrior, be too crazy for you. Have a great day. <clears throat> Who else we got still in this chat that's popping off? Yes, no, I don't. You guys, so if you're still listening to my voice, why don't you throw something down in chat so I can get to saying my uh, thank yous to you, Modern Genetics. Thank you as well. Other than that, man, I think I've got everybody that has been chatting as of late. 420, 420. You have a great night. Who else have I? Uh, Well, it's UKSI UKSIF 420 Resurrection Prop Charlie's Farm Sergeant Pepper Smiley's Farm I know they were here Spartan Grown Sure, thank you for tuning in Jack's Greenstock I don't know can pass. I don't know how I almost forgot you. Oh, so many great people that uh, tune in and are part of this anymore. One, uh, what an honor it is to be here. Uh, taking up any of your time. You know, I do. I, uh, I consider this to be a huge honor that anybody would tune in and listen to my voice and hang out with me. Uh, it's amazing. It helps me out. That's in my step every day when I think about this project, much less when I hit that live button. Uh, it's a new thing. It's a new thing. It's a great thing. Uh, can't wait to get back here and spend some more time with you guys tomorrow. Make sure and help somebody out. Do something nice for somebody. It doesn't even... It doesn't even have to be something physical. Just send positive vibes that way. Somebody you know that's suffering in a bad way. Just, you know, think about them in a good light. Whatever. Send positive thinking towards their way. You know, whatever you can do, every little bit helps. Random acts of kindness save lives. I can promise you. I can promise you. Uh, God. As great as it feels to be back tonight, I do have to sign up and get some stuff done so I can make tomorrow happen. Good night, everybody. And uh, so grateful to be here. <laughs> Boom, Bob, stop, baby, people. I don't think he's moving any people, is he? Just kidding. You guys have a great day. Love you all. See you tomorrow night. Thank mm -hmm. you.